you know, thanks for what you do with your podcast and all the rest. Uh, you're doing a great job. Hope everybody keeps tuning in. You get a lot of good info, a lot of insights, understandings of how to get strong, how to stay strong, how to use your strength. You do a great job, dude. <laughs> you make things better than they are in real life, I think. Yeah. If you don't follow Massonomics, y'all do it. Social media, uh, website, everything. Massonomics. Yeah. Welcome, everyone, for episode 404, episode 404, Error Not Found. What? <laughs> technical. Just kidding. Yeah. Just kidding. Gonna we are here, even though. you the technical guy. <laughs> technically a guy. Uh, no, no errors. We've never any errors on the Mass Sonics podcast, so we are up and running for episode 404, the lifting podcast about nothing. Welcome, all return listeners. Welcome, all new listeners. My name is Tanner. And my name is Tommy. And I love playing two-hand touch and eating way too much. <laughs> and the twins! <laughs> and the twins! <laughs> and what twins? Uh, after, after we got off last week, uh, have you watched the commercial yet, Tanner? No. <laughs> oh, my God. I kind of want to play it right now because it's yeah. so mind-blowing that this is a commercial. Because, I mean, it is and pretty w- badass. It is. What, what, did, uh, what was it? What beer was it? It's then? for Coors. It? Coors. And oh man, the, the whole the whole line. There's there's a whole like uh, campaign of these commercials. Yeah, yeah, like, right, right. I love parties that never end. Burritos <laughs> at four a.m. It's like oh man, these are like things that really applied yeah. to me when I was twenty one. Yeah. Like hard, yeah. these are these are great. Um, and. Twins <laughs> and those twins. Yeah, it always goes back. Didn't to like twins. a lot of them end that. Like, wasn't it? Oh, like, it would all end of them. That. The twins come up yeah. like three times, okay. and all of them. The one it really focuses on football. It's like I love quarterbacks eating dirt, and it's just yeah, like I guys just that. getting hit yeah. over and over again. Um, should I, should so I play? The, the, should I play this commercial? It's so a, yeah, the Coors Light twins were a thing then too. Like those those uh, two. A- yeah, in one, there's, they actually call out a lady by her name. She must be some model. I don't know who she is, though. Um, okay. Here, do you want do you want to hear it? Should I play it here, Tanner? Yeah. I don't think yeah. there's any way we'll get flagged for this, uh, okay. you know, in the, in the copy. No one remembers stuff. that far. No, yeah. I don't think YouTube will, will pick this one up, so I think we're okay. Right. So are, are you ready for it? Yeah. I know it doesn't come across the best, but for our listeners, I think this should be okay. Here we go. Okay. I love playing two-hand touch, eating way too much. Watching my team win with the twins. <laughs> no! Quarterbacks eating dirt! Pom poms and short skirts! Fans who won't quit! And those twins! And I love them too! Here's the That's it, right there. I feel like, uh,. Uh, in my mind, I thought I was really overemphasizing the twins. Thing. <laughs> no, no, like, you, nope, you weren't. <laughs> not even doing it enough. No, <laughs> like, <laughs> they really ham that part of it up. Uh, yeah, and there, there's yeah. several of these things, and the imagery that goes with it is even better. It's just so yeah. 90s looking. But it's amazing reading the comments on YouTube. People are like, "Oh my god, how did they make this commercial? Like this yeah. was uh, this was back when people were free. Like it's just yeah, hilarious comments yeah, yeah. in there." So. Um, <laughs> Maybe maybe Ring. we'll have to ask uh, Huck Finn, our guest, if he remembers that commercial. Oh, we should. We should ask him that. Um, <laughs> bring back the Coors Light Twins, am I right? That's right. <laughs> and while you're at it, bring back Build Fast Formula. Are you tired of supplements that just don't work? You take them, you wait a few minutes. Seems like nothing happens. Well, it's because you're not using Build Fast Formula suppu- supplements. You can fix that by going to buildfastformula.com. That's where you find them. You click on Shop Formulas. You can look at everything that they've got for sale there, including their Vaso Blitz, Full Blitz, 8020 Protein, their Blitz 3D Drink Hack, and Glyco Hack. Uh, find it all at buildfastformula.com. And make sure to use uh, Massonomics discount code. And let me make sure. Sometimes I get confused with Mass or Massonomics. It is Massonomics. That'll save you 10% off of every order. Used to just be your first order. So. Now, every time you want to order Vaso Blitz, you can use discount code Massonomics and save 10%. And if you sign up for a subscription of any of those products, you get another 10% off, 10% plus 10%. Use Square Root, Radius, Pi. Mm-hmm. It's like a 1,000%. You can't, you can't afford not to do it. So check them out, buildfastformula.com. Also another South Dakota company. So 
what's not to love? Well, we're going to move north of the border to our friends from North Dakota. And this uh, episode is also brought to you by Barefoot Shoes. Now, hopefully, the Christmas season is just winding down here. Hopefully, you were a good little boy and Santa brought you some Barefoot Shoes. But if he didn't, now is your chance. Go to www.barefoot.store where you can see the best damn barefoot shoes available. They have everything like our favorite winter footwear of choice, the Bruin boots available in a very rich brown leather and also a black leather. Uh, I wore mine. My dad had never seen them before. I wore them home for Christmas, and he goes, hey, those look pretty cool. What are those? And I said, oh, put your foot into these Let things, me tell Dad. You. <laughs> hey, old man, try these yeah. out. Prepare to have your mind blown. Uh, so I was really turning heads there. But if you're not the boot type, they also got shoes. They have the Ursus. They have the Oso. And they're also available. The Ursus are available in high top or low top. Or, you know, if you're partial to Massonomics, there's still just a few, just a few of the Ursonomics sitting around. So if those are available in a your couple size, sizes, maybe make sure you get those because once they're gone, they're gone. And there are not many sizes left. Um and while you're at it, uh, add a pair of their awesome wraps to your cart and make sure to use code MASS and you can get the awesome wraps for free with your shoe purchase. So once again, go to www.barefoot.store and get your barefoot shoes. Thank you, Barefoot. You might have to get your dad a pair of Bruin boots next, yeah. next Christmas. Well, that, that, that gotta, just made Christmas shopping a little easier for he, next year. He's got to be good for 364 more days here. Yeah. So let's we'll see how that goes. Not your nice list. I see, actually, as we're recording here, I see you have baby spit up all over my sweatshirt. Mm. But if you're audio yeah. only, that won't distract you. No. It'll, even if you're on YouTube, you're just no, going to have to live with it. I gave a look. I have just food all over my pants for my kids. But I'm like, <laughs> hey, no one sees my pants when we record, so we're good. For all I you, shipped for all, my pants. Yeah, I ship my, for all people, no, I don't even have pants on when I record yeah. this podcast. Yeah. Just could be completely naked. <laughs> uh, happy New Year's, everyone. This is coming out mm. on November. Uh, January 1st, so we made it to 2024. Ringing in the new one. Yeah, and it's, uh, I, I don't know, I don't have a sound bite for New Year's, but uh, it's a party party sort of thing, right? Are you going to go out for New Year's Eve? Uh, that'd will, be Sunday night. We'll I'll rip it up on Sunday night. Definitely not be going out for New Year's Eve. I wouldn't be against yeah. it. I mean, if I could, yeah. I probably would, but uh, yeah, right. damn, with kids, it's very tough. What, what, are the, what, what happens? Like, bars usually aren't open on Sunday night, right? Uh, no, but they will. I mean, they, they just will be, be right? then. Yeah, they yeah. Will because there's okay. too much stuff going on. They can't sit that out. Right. Yeah. That's so they'll just all be open. Yeah. As far as I know. Okay. Okay. Doesn't matter. None of this matters for <laughs> my plans that I'm making. But. No one's coming to us for the yeah. New Year's Eve plans. <laughs> but it wasn't that many years ago. This was uh this was a big planning. There's a lot of planning going on right now between, right. Between, uh, all the Christmas parties I was going to be going to meeting up with people and then also you got to just roll that right into the next weekend with New Year's, man. It was it was a busy time of year. Yeah, I do feel like uh, it's been a while since uh, we've had a good weather update. Though. It's been a while. I was hoping you'd say that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So, did you travel at all for Christmas? Like we could tie I, Christmas into travel. Uh, I traveled Christ- yesterday in about okay. the worst of it. And yeah. it was not fun, <laughs> not <laughs> ideal. A lot of so, like, what time were you driving around? Uh, I yesterday? was. I left eastern southeast South Dakota about nine thirty a.m. Okay. And normally, it's just a touch under two hours to get to to get to my hometown, and it took me about two and a half, which doesn't sound too bad, but that was a that was a rough two and a half to do it. Let's, yeah. I mean, I think there was like one car that I was, I was, you know, the one driving faster, like right. lots of people on the interstate driving 30 miles an hour. The speed limit is 80. Lots <laughs> of people driving 30. Um, some people driving, you know, 45, 50, but uh, I, for the most part, tried to keep it above 50, but there was times where staying above 50 was not doable. So yeah, yeah. It, it made for a long trip and it wasn't. If it wasn't the roads that were getting you, it was the completely iced over windshield that you could not keep clean. So it's like, oh, you want to you want to drive home, put like glasses <laughs> on see. and smear yeah. Vaseline over them, and that's and now you're going on a <laughs> on a hundred and some mile trip. That's how you drive in the whole way. That part really sucked. Yeah, <laughs> I didn't really do any traveling, mm, so, so I missed out on all the fun. 
No, but like even just being at home, I'm like, God, this weather is horrific. Uh, I don't know because we got a little bit of snow, like a decent little bit, uh, not not a lot, but then it was just raining on top it of it. It's so like much. our backyard has like a crust of, <laughs> yeah. it's like snow crusted, uh, uh, ice crusted snow. Mm-hmm. Looks looks odd. And then uh, cleaning off the driveway today was terrible because it was just slush. Yeah. Just pure slush. So like the snow blower can't blow it very far at all, if at all. Mm-hmm. And then scooping it is terrible because it weighs so much its density. Its weight is very high. So, yeah, uh, I guess old man winter got to us eventually this year, didn't he? He did, but we didn't really get snow. Like when I left town inside the house, you could hear the sleet hitting the house. Yeah. It was so yeah. loud and it was coming right. down so much. Right. And uh, it went through yeah, stages. And it, hurt. Of, it felt like hail almost. Yeah, like yeah it, was, it did. And I, I went through just in that drive yesterday, I went through stages of snow, rain, ice, sleet, back to snow. Like it was just constantly changing. Uh, luckily today, though, when I drove home, everything was clear. There was no yeah. precipitation of any kind, and it, it, it made the trip pretty easy. The, the, Middle of the road temperature is what's making it like more dangerous almost because it's uh just floating just, right around thirty two ish where you're never yeah. quite sure are things freezing, right? You know what's going on with all that. Where if it's just super ass cold, it's just mm-hmm. going to be snow. Yeah, you and, just know. You know yeah, it's, right, but right. if it was cold, actually, the amount of snow we would have gotten these past few days would have been insane. Because isn't yeah, isn't it like one inch of rain equals something, like a foot of snow or something like that? Right, th- something like that. Yeah. yeah. Right. And right. I, I, like where I was at, my parents said the, supposedly they had gotten like three inches of rain over the past, you know, three or four days here, something like right. that. So that would have been a disastrous blizzard if that actually happened. Yeah. Santa brought us snow, didn't he? <laughs> yeah. Yes, he did. Uh, did you get any any good uh, Christmas presents this year? Um, any any? I got a few things. Yeah, you know, yeah. we did just buy a house like a, just a touch over yeah. a month ago, so that kind yeah. of um, like, took like uh, we've been buying shit non not, on top of buying a house, we've been buying a house worth of stuff. I mean, we're just yeah. It was like every day my wife goes to the store and it's like, oh, we have new stuff here. So it's like uh, Christmas just feel, feels like a formality at this point. Like it's not actually right. I mean, that's for us. Obviously for the kids, it's a whole different story. But um, I got a pair, but probably, probably one of the more uh, exciting things as far as surprises go. I got a pair of Nike Dunk shoes, which I'd been years since I had a pair of those. So excited to see yeah. those. I got a, I'm kind of into F1 racing. I got an F1 hoodie as a surprise. Oh. I wasn't expecting that flying Ryan hooked that one up. So is it for anyone in particular? Is it, <laughs> it just is for, for Max F1? Verstappen, the the number oh, yeah. one champion, which I thought you were saying it was an F1 hoodie. Like when uh Rob <laughs> Lowe wears an NFL, <laughs> for the NFL to a game. Yeah. 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 <laughs> it was not of quite of that caliber. No, nope, it was for a particular person. So it's like, no, I'm just really in support of F1. Yeah. <laughs> just want all the teams to have fun. <laughs> Although an F one hoodie would be a lot less weird than wearing an N like it would so, for sure because that like it's about like the a niche enough sport that, that you right. can like wear a thing that's like I'm a fan of this just sport and, and it in wouldn't general. seem you'd be like yeah that's yeah worth advertising whereas if you're like I'm like, I'm no, just, I just a wear big the fan NBA of the NFL. shirt or the NFL yeah. shirt it's a little more like uh, really you can't pick a team because <laughs> everyone has a team you know even if you don't right. have a team you have a team you have right. one you can pick so yeah there was actually a guy on this one um, otherwise. We've talked Does it look this. like an old, uh, like a dirt, a local dirt track race? No, because uh, I actually told Ryan, I gave him credit. Right. I said, "Wow, I got to, I got to give you points here, man. You picked one that doesn't look like it's a billboard because <laughs> you can, you know, it, it doesn't have the NASCAR yeah. thing going on where it's like, man, you just put a thousand logos on a shirt and walked out of the house. Yeah, uh, this one basically just has the guy's uh, name and just an outline on the sleeve, and then he's number one. So there's a one on it, and. Uh, than the Red Bull logo. I mean, so it's, if you didn't know, you might just think I'm wearing a Red Bull hoodie, maybe. Like, that's, uh, sounds like you got a new hoodie, so you won't have to be babysitting any coats. There, even <laughs> just one less coat to babysit at the end the of the day. The one thing I wouldn't be caught dead in in this weather is a babysitting a coat. <laughs> no, I know that. no, no. Does it count as babysitting a coat, though, if you never take it off? Is that, is that babysitting it? <laughs> It's a form of babysitting it, I suppose. Yeah, you know, you're still shackled to it in some yeah. way. It's a ball and chain of some sort. <laughs> yeah, it's better, but uh, yeah, yeah it's that's still not quite that freedom you're looking for. Right. Yeah. right. Otherwise, we did. Uh, we are, you know, yeah. The Christmas is way more about the kids, especially now right. that my boy is old enough that he can 
be excited about it. It was whoa, just freaking out and screaming all the time. And, and yeah. then, you know, you get them all these presents and it's funny, the ones that you think they'll be excited about, they're not as excited. And then the ones that you think are just yeah. like a thing, that they just, true. dude, hungry, hungry hippos. Do you remember that game? Yeah, yeah, that was yeah, one. Leah saw it in the store, and she's like, "Oh, I just remember that from when we were kids. I I had to buy it, and I thought, oh, yeah, maybe he'll like this. I doubt yeah. it though, dude. He was obsessed. Hungry, hungry hippos was blowing his mind. He thought that was, you know, That's the game, game lasts five yeah. seconds, and it's right. oh, let's do it again. And it just yeah. went for hours like that. It was. Uh, so he loves that. That's a good game. It is. One no, of our it, kids it, got it, Operation, which that's mm, quite the uh, nerve. Dexterity. You got to have It's also have just your... like, uh, <laughs> what a game to make you nervous. Like, let me practice being <laughs> like high going. anxiety. <laughs> let, let me practice like really high anxiety, you know? Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. So that was for the, yeah. Uh, we had kids stuff, all that. Family came. We had a good time. So that was my Christmas. What about you, Tanner? What what do, what do you guys do? Well, kind of like that, only... Not the house, but we, uh, my wife had gotten a pickup, you know, and oh, uh, yeah, that's right. Yep. Pick up here last we like month, to, so you know, we both like to, like, we, we really like to take care of our big purchases ahead of the holidays, you know, it's just, <laughs> yeah, so, then it that has it. so that was kind of the big, uh, we had already, like, of course, we agreed, like, that was the Christmas present and we wouldn't do things, and then we still did some other yeah. things, but, uh, the ones, like, it's my wife's pickup, so the great p- beauty of it is, like, all the Christmases I did get her. We're like stuff for the pickup. So <laughs> yeah. it's a new mahogany steering wheel Ooh. that I have to put on a uh, new, you know, horn, is horn it, button and mahogany is it steering wheel. And basically stuff. all metal. And then there's like wood on the wheel itself or is that? Yeah. It's all okay. billet aluminum. Yeah. And okay, then there the, you go. Yeah, yeah. the front side of the uh, um, wheel is mahogany riveted to the, the back of it is billet aluminum too. It's sweet. Okay. Yeah. Like as far as the steering wheel can go, it's probably like as cool of a, uh, steering wheel as you could picture, I uh-huh. would say, you know? Uh, and then I got her, uh, well, I got a, uh, new sound system. Oh, the, you uh, did. Okay. Yeah. Like yeah. the head so, unit and everything. Yeah. So it's a retro sound, I think is the okay. brand. So, so it, it does looks, look like the original. It looks original, but then it's, you know, it's Bluetooth and, mm-hmm digital and uh then uh there's no speakers in the vehicle as there it is now so i got three like was it because there never was or just they had been removed at some point they'd been removed the original okay. spe- you know the original radio is just an am yeah radio and they're the original speakers are weird old little speak there's two right under the dash mm-hmm. like above the radio or under the dash and there'd be like vent holes there where those speakers would be but they're awful yeah. Um, you know, I mean, I, they weren't there, so I don't know what this, but you can't even like, if you had, you couldn't even hook modern speakers up to this old radio. You'd have to get like different retro speakers to actually yeah. even plug. But so, so are like the cavities where the speakers were do like new speakers fit in those spots? Well, Is, so yeah, like I, I've on this particular project, I'm working with a sound guy actually to have them okay. because he've do, he's done a few of these before. So like that spot, there'll be one six by nine. Mm -hmm. in that spot under the dash and then there's these these uh i don't know panels you buy and it doesn't go on the door but it goes on like uh that front piece just in in front of the door and there's like a panel that attaches to the uh inside of the cab on each side so there'll be a speaker on each side and then one in the center panel or something yeah it's on the kicker panel yes yes so it's just like a kicker panel cover that allows you to put a I don't know if it's like a four inch speaker in, on each side or something like yeah. that. And then, you know, a guy from high school that has a big box in the back of his Chevy Cavalier <laughs> and you're going to put that in, <laughs> throw that in there. <laughs> yeah. uh, so it's not, uh, it's, it is not over the top, but it is, okay. you know, it will, it it'll, does it'll bring you to the modern age at least. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. It'll be, bring us to the modern age. And also like, it's a tiny cab, like you don't need, <laughs> right. very, you, you don't know, need you're booming. You don't need a, tw- a 20 speaker system. Yeah. Either. You're in like a, a three foot deep by <laughs> you know seven foot wide yeah. box there uh-huh. you know it's like you are sitting <laughs> on so much room speakers. for sound right. to go in there yeah. right right uh so that was kind of our main thing was pickup related stuff but the coolest thing i got is uh the most masters thing i got mm. this is so masters and i i love i was so excited about this thing it's uh 
when we go to all our kids' games and you sit on the bleachers, you know, oh, you're wedged you in there. you get the little seat? Uh, yeah, I got the seat with the back. Yeah. And I'm really excited about using the seat with oh, the, yeah. the fold-out seat with the back for the first time. I'm like, <laughs> I oh, yeah, I that. instantly aged like 20 years by owning this. Like, Because <laughs> yeah. now when I walk into the game, <laughs> you, uh, you know, you're holding your that thing. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh, what's wrong with this guy's back? He's like, he's not <laughs> like, That guy must be old. Holy <laughs> crap. But that will be nice. I'm oh, like, I, and it yes. also like builds in a perimeter of your space because it's <laughs> right, fairly yeah. big so it it's like yep, this is my bubble nobody uh-huh. gets to come within it because there are literal the, there's literally a space taker upper of this <laughs> yeah. area there's that an actual you cannot, fence here yeah <laughs> 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 yes uh so i am super excited about that thing my ki- well, uh, my oldest kid got an xbox and mm. i haven't played it yet it's the same one that you have but has uh, he played it yet though yeah. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I don't know if it hadn't been hooked up yet. No, or... it's definitely been played. <laughs> okay. Just yeah. uh, not. He plays uh, what is that? Sea of Thieves. Oh, is a game he know. likes on there. I don't know if that means anything to any gamers. I, I gotta. And then I of course like Fortnite Google. and uh, you know, I gotta Rocket just League. The sea of Thieves. Hmm. Never heard of it, but I do see it here. I don't know if it's popular or not. It seems it to be highly rated. Friends. Okay. It almost reminded me. Uh, do you, did you ever play Red? What is it? Red Dead Revolver? Uh, I didn't, but I, I mean, I know what the game is. It reminded me kind of almost of that, only pirates. Piratey, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, I've never heard of this ever. Okay. I was curious if you had. But again, I'm not really the gamer guy, so yeah, kind of the so, wrong person. To yeah, ask Red here. Dead, Red Dead Redemption. Uh, I don't even. Uh, I think that Red Dead Redemption is like one of the more popular games, probably like ever. And I didn't, mm-hmm. didn't even know the name of it, so that yeah. kind of shows <laughs> like <laughs> kind of shows my gaming knowledge. Yeah. Uh, uh, I would like to play Madden on it. I don't have it, but. Mm. Uh, I I would actually like to play a whole bunch of games on it, but I'm just not exactly sure when it is that I would do that. Yeah, you need to, uh, um, because with that one, you know, you can only get the digital versions. A lot of times around right. holidays and stuff, like the Xbox store will just have certain games that are like 90% off. And so it's like, here's 10 games that are all $10 or less. Uh, like There's a right, few right, games right. I bought for $3. I'm like, uh, I played that game on the original or Xbox 360 like 10 years ago. It's only three dollars. I should probably yeah. buy it just to have it in case I get bored someday. And yeah, so far I haven't been bored someday yet. But if I ever do get bored, I do have those games sitting ready to go. So do you have the Game Pass? Uh, I did when because I think that one when you when you buy it, does it come with a year? It comes with or? something, some okay. period of time. Yeah, it, yeah, and there was that. Actually, no, it comes with I think a few months. And then I remember when I bought mine, uh, there was because it was around Black Friday. There was some Black Friday promotion where. It was through Target or somewhere. Like, if you bought a three-month card, you got, like, three months free. So, I ended up buying six months. I got, like, six months free. So, I had Game Pass for, like, a year, and um, now I don't have it. So, now I just buy a game when I want a game because I don't, okay. play, I don't play enough to justify having Game Pass. So, what does the Game Pass do? It's basically like Netflix of games. You just okay. y- you log in, and here's the entire ca- – you have an account, so here's the entire catalog. Play whatever you want, as much as you want. And then as soon as your subscription runs out, you're cut off from accesses. Okay. Goes. So, yeah, if you want to play a bunch of games, that's a great way to do that. But the the thing is, is yeah, as soon as your subscription ends, like, you don't have your games anymore. Right, right. So there, there's ups and downs to that. You know, like, if you do like to play a lot, you know, buying, like, three or four plus dollars games every month gives a lot of money, especially if, like, you're only going to play them for a few months and then quit. So, like, that way it's a great way to try stuff out. But, yeah, if you're going to play something more long term, probably want to buy it then. I just don't know shit about gaming and gaming systems. <laughs> Dude, I, I don't either, though. It's, <laughs> there's so much going on. Like, it's it's so much. A, I mean, I sound. I know I sound a thousand when I say this, but it is so much more complicated than, well, like, 15 years ago. Oh, the, the concept of a game where you can just turn on and play it. Like <laughs> Mario, what, right. you know? Like, that's right. just gone. That just doesn't you exist, have right. The number of games where, because I'm such a casual gamer, that I just want to, like, turn on, play like Mario, hit save and be done and it's like nope you need to start an account you need to right. build a character that's you the need part to watch that... 20 minutes of cutscenes before we can start yeah and i don't now like that we've all the, the cut scenes, yes now, now that you have the cutscenes, now you need to do 20 minutes of training okay and then uh yeah it just goes on and on but yes and then every system has its or every game and every developer has their own account too and right yeah it's i lot. hate that part 
I do not like that. That's the part that I dislike. Like even with setting it up, I'm like, I don't want to register for all this shit. Mm-hmm. Like just to be able to like, no, 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 no. I don't yep. like it. I do and not then, like oh, that. Oh, you I haven't played this game for three weeks. Oh, there's a 50 gigabyte update that needs to apply. And that's going to take 20 minutes to download and another 20 minutes to install. So oh, you wanted to play quick for an hour. Yeah, actually that entire hour is spent updating the game. So try again tomorrow. <laughs> so like stuff like that is so annoying. Yeah, that's, uh, <laughs> there is, uh, I mean, there's pros and cons of it all, but like, there is something about like playing Super Nintendo and you just put the game in well, and I know, that's what, in 12 seconds. Yes, you can't just be a casual person anymore. Like, it, right. Like, you just, you can't do it. There's always that, like, updates. That's what, that's what like, uh, weeds me out of being involved at all though. Yeah. Like that makes it so I'm like, well, I can't even get involved a little bit because Or you can uh, be like me and just play like old racing games that they haven't made <laughs> updates for for a couple of years and they just don't have <laughs> updates. So you don't really But then you then you haven't turned your Xbox on in 3 months and your Xbox needs to update. So then that takes like 30 minutes and then it needs to in, restart and install and do all this and it's like, "Oh yeah, my Xbox that I haven't played now takes an hour to get to right. this point where it can be right. played again." I did. Uh, I did have some tiger meat over. Oh yeah, Christmas I saw that. I usually, yeah, yeah. Usually, I always have get to uh, get my hands on some tiger meat, and damn, was it good. Was it? I do think the p- best vehicle for uh, eating tiger meat is the club cracker, not the I, okay. Not I was the curious if you, cracker. I was curious if you're gonna say that. I think the club cracker is the superior cracker always, though, isn't it? Like, would you ever yeah. pick saltines? Well, well if I'm soup, soup, yeah, soup, soup saltine saltines. is the right cracker. Yeah, because it's just so almost non-existent. But yeah. right. otherwise, the club cracker for eating is always the better choice. Yeah, I can't think of any example other than soup. Yeah. I mean, but a club cracker would not be good for soup. I mean, you could pick worse things for sure. Right, right. I mean, if, if I'm going with uh, saltines 51% of the time, yeah, club's getting it 49. It's like barely edging yeah. out on that one. Yeah. Uh, for tiger meat, absolutely the club cracker, though. Like, the saltine's mm-hmm. okay, but the club cracker is a lot better. Mm-hmm. Far far more premium cracker. <laughs> Definitely. But <laughs> there. But that being said, Ritz would not be the right cracker. No, for, uh, no, no, uh, no, no, uh, that would not either. Tiger meat like that would be not. And I don't know what the difference is, but there's a very big difference. I think club crackers have more of that buttery flavor. They're very though, buttery. And their yeah. texture is a little better than Ritz, too. Yeah. I think. I don't need enough Ritz crackers, though, to know. I just remember the last time I had Ritz crackers, I was surprised how not good they actually were. When you get used to club crackers, you kind of just assume that's how crackers are. <laughs> and then, well, then the Ritz are just not. So club crackers are just the best crackers. I mean, They are. If you're going to go with yeah. a, kind of a plain-ish cracker, you know, it doesn't have any flavoring and other things like that going on. It, it's the superior choice. Right. I don't disagree. I think that that's pretty much spot on. Did you uh, watch any holiday movies this year, Tanner? I watched Home Alone and Home Alone 2, and my my kindergarten daughter thought the scenes with the robbers getting beat up in Home Alone were hilarious. <laughs> yeah, so I was, was so ha- I was so <laughs> happy. But then when we went to watch Home Alone 2, there's so much lead up to it. And there she's is. Like, she's like, when it, she kept be asking when, when it, it is. Yeah, when yeah, is the when ass it, whooping yeah. happen? <laughs> <laughs> when does the attempted murder happen? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> So, uh, but Home Alone and Home Alone Two are awesome Christmas movies. So we watched, we watched, uh, we got the kids. So the family was in town. We got the kids put to bed on what night was that? Friday night, and I came out, and my father in law was watching Home Alone Two, was just on TV and kind of laughing. And uh, someone said, "Let's go watch it on the nice TV. Let's go watch a movie downstairs." And I'm like, yeah, okay. So we go, I head down there, and I'm like, we got Home Alone 2. It's on Disney or something. Yeah. So I pulled it up. I'm like, all right, we're just going to start this over. We're going to watch Home Alone 2 right now. Yeah. And I started up. I did not realize. I have not seen that movie in probably over 10 years, the second one. Like, I haven't even caught clips of the second one. You know, normally it seems like the first one's on quite a bit. Yeah. Um, Man, the whole thing of the second one was just kind of lost on me. And yeah, I was, yeah. The biggest surprise about the whole thing, though, was like you said, I'm thinking, when does he beat these guys up? That is right. way at the end of the movie. They really make you wait for that one. Yes, yes. And that's like, the those are the big payoff scenes mm-hmm. of, of is, the Home Alone. It is, yeah. It's, it's the climax. Yeah. But uh, what I thought was funny, though, in Home Alone, uh, the second one, they are in Chicago. 
going to the Chicago airport, man, we were just there like two months ago. And it is funny how almost exactly the same that looked to me. I'm not sure if you paid much attention to that. No, part, I really didn't. Uh, uh, so I didn't, many of those. Yeah. Halls, I'm like, I'm pretty sure this is the exact hall that Tanner and I walked down right, when, right. We were, when we were getting off our airplane. But uh, yeah, just whole chunks of that look exactly the same, have not changed at all. Right. Oh, that's funny. <laughs> um, did you have a can over there? Oh, I do. What I'm, do you got? I'm, I'm hitting the peach Waterloo once again. Peach. It's just too damn good. Mm. Okay. Peach Waterloo. That's what you had last week? I got yeah. something a little different this week. I got orange cream bubbly. Ooh. An orange. Have we had that one? I don't know. I bet the it's going to be good, though. The name sounds familiar, but I don't really remember seeing that can. Oh, that's a pretty crispy crack. Yeah, that's good. Orange if I had to guess, bubbly. I'd say that's a four all day. That's without me even knowing. Yeah, that's a solid four. Mm-hmm. That's easy solid four. Yeah, that's good. That's tasty. Uh, did you watch any other Christmas movies besides the Home Alone classics? That was the only, yeah, that was really the only one we got through. There was a few that we kind of started, but, you know, with kids, it's yeah. um, keeping attention spans was a little tricky. So, yeah, Home Alone 2 was the only one that really got, got one. watched a decent amount of football, but that's, uh, oh, you know, actually, Tanner, this is this will come out. We better put our college football playoff picks in right now. Oh, People yeah, wait all year it. for this. I'm taking SDSU. <laughs> well, okay. that, that is, I didn't. I didn't specify. So okay, we'll start with the FCS then. <laughs> FCS. SDSU. When when do they play? Actually, ah, uh, that might be like not this upcoming weekend, but the one after that, maybe. Um, I'm, I'm making that up right now. FCS championship is. Come on, let me see. Let me see. Mm, if only Google just actually told you when the championship was. Make life easy. Uh, oh, January 7th. So we're a touch early on that one. I guess okay. we can come back to that next week. Okay. I'm going to pick SDSU in that one too, though. Yeah. You know? uh, but FBS, Tanner. Yeah, what do we got? So we got uh, Michigan, Alabama for the Rose Bowl. Yes, that is correct. Hmm. I'll go the Wolverines, I guess. Number one, I guess I'm picking the favorite, but just to not pick Alabama, I suppose. Yeah, I don't want to pick Alabama. I'd love to see them lose. Uh, I'm not really a Michigan fan, but I, I'm i more of a Michigan fan than an Alabama fan. So, uh, yeah, I'd pick uh, Michigan in that game as well. The more interesting one that w- has several Massonomics ties here is the mm-hmm. number two Washington versus number three Texas. Mm-hmm. This one of particular interest for both of us. Uh, I'm def obviously picking Washington. Me I've got to go with my 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 former coach, the college yep. football coach of the year. This is this is this is also not uh, hyperbole or uh, something made up. Uh, that was my coach at the University of Sioux Falls uh, almost 20 years ago, <laughs> and even more so. He's from where, Tommy? He's so we're talking about. The head coach of Washington, Kalen DeBoer, he is a Milbank, South Dakota native, which is where I'm from. I'd like to think we're probably maybe on the Mount Rushmore people to ever come from Milbank. <laughs> <laughs> Kalen DeBoer, that guy from Massonomics, we're just really up at the up at the peak of yeah. what's ever been achieved. Uh, actually, also there's the the guy that invented Tommy John underwear. He's yeah, also from Milbank. So yeah. We're probably three of the four that are on the the Massonomics of or the the Mount Rushmore of Milbank. Maybe That's probably else cheese right there. related. Well, there is a lot of cheese related stuff in Milbank too, but no one cares about that. That's yeah. a, that's not that's no one cares about that one. Um, so yeah, Kalen DeBoer. Uh, because of that, I bought. Have you watched any Washington football games this year? Not really. Oh, Nor I've have, watched so many of them because yeah. I want to. I want to cheer for this yep. and. Uh, they have a lot of close games, but they got the thing where they always figure out a way to win it, and that's what a good team is, right? That's right. That's what a good coach gets you. And he is the coach of the year, right? Yeah, he did win that award. I think I thought I saw something like his all-time head coach 
his all time record as a head coach oh, he has is a loss something for like many games, yeah, a hundred and something in ten or something like that. It's just nuts. talk about climbing up the ladder too, dude. Yeah, he has. I mean, he's from- actually like I wonder what's going to happen. He's well, he's got the number two program in the country right now, but um, you know, Michigan, Alabama, Texas, two, three of the biggest other programs out there. None of them are in need of a coach right now, but I'm mm-hmm. just wondering like who the Next, like, top 10 all-time schools that needs a coach, like, they're going to be calling this guy. Yeah, I mean, I don't know. Yeah, it's at this point, what's your next move? It's either I a mean, Big it's to, 10 or an SEC I, school. Yeah, it's, it's to coach, like, Texas, Alabama, Michigan, Ohio State. Uh, yeah, I, I don't know what Georgia, else you Georgia, you know. Like, I don't know what else you would pick, and all those right. schools seem to be kind of set at the, at right, the moment. Right, right, so. right. And, yeah, outside of those, though, why would you want to go to Texas A&M and rebuild right. that? Thing, right. whatever they got going on you know why would you want to do that when you already have accomplished what you have so yeah i mean it's been pretty amazing watching what he's accomplished in so we definitely a relatively want to short him, period of time him win there huh yeah so I'd, i really want to see him win that game so that would make it washington michigan in the finals i uh, i'd love to see wa- I, I want to see washington washington win for sure yeah washington all day see. oh this I is sports agree. and book segment and oh, right, i do have right. a second half of this oh, then do you okay uh, uh i have just to be clear, our guest he went to he wouldn't be signing it under the name Bob, would he? <laughs> or is that actually Bob? <laughs> Let's see. Because <laughs> Bob is in the waiting room, and I that 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 could be that could be. I bet that that's him actually. <laughs> so we should probably wrap this up pretty much then. Okay. And probably br- bring him on to be um, safe. and then we find out it's we let him in it's actually bob from texas and we're like damn it bob well how, <laughs> how does it work if people join on later do they have to request like that or, oh you're because you let people in as like i let everyone time. in yeah everyone yeah, you're always letting let people in. in um so bob i don't know if that's it oh he just said okay trying to get logged in i'll ask him are you bob <laughs> i like i like keith's comment he says no way that's huck and i'm debating i'm trying to decide if he wanted punctuation saying no way that's huck or no way that that is huck <laughs> or no way that's huck <laughs> i don't know what you mean keith it's a punctuation there <laughs> uh book segment quick as we're wrapping that up though i did get a ta- end of the year here end of the year wrap up i did get a tally on my wife's number of books read in 2023 oh boy uh, any idea on what the number of books well, my I'm wife really were at in 2023? I'm torn because she had a baby, which means yeah. you want to keep your activity level somewhat lower. I do but s- also, would say she said over the last uh, month or so, she really hasn't been able to read near as many books as she wants. I was going to say, like, but you're, don't you're, let that mislead you like it did. Uh, that's why I'm so torn because you have a little more personal time, but at the same time, you don't. So I really don't know what way to spin that one. Um, <laughs> I'll say 220 books. Well, on the Kindle app alone, which is strictly reading books and doesn't include her Libby app, which is the library book she reads and doesn't include her Audible books that she listens to, she hit 485 (sighs) read books. And when adding in the Libby and the Audible listened books, she figured the number was about 550. (laughs) So that's like... A book and a, a, book half, and a half a single day. day, though. Yes. Like, how long are yes. these books? Is she reading, like, the Bernstein Bears over and over? No. Uh, <laughs> I, 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 I had this exact <laughs> conversation today. I'm like, that doesn't math. And I'm like, and so what I found out, she reads books literally 10 times faster than I do because she'll say she'll be like, so she'll say, and she said and the average length of the book she reads is probably about 300 pages you know, uh-huh. three to 400 pages. And she said that'll take about three and three or three and a half hours of reading. So she can, she reads God. 300 okay. p- page, you know, she reads a hundred pages, 100 pages an, hour. an hour. Okay. Right. And I'm like, I probably read like 25 God, pages would also an hour make if I'm reading lucky. So much more enjoyable to, yeah, know that you, you get so much done through books. Yes. But then her point a... to that was like, well, you're good at lifting because you do it all the time. She's like, I'm good yeah. at reading because I read all the time. I read she, it every okay. day. So Sorry. I read way. She's like, I read way faster now than I did like yes. three years ago when she started like really getting into reading. And I could totally see that. Uh, I really want to talk about this more, but Huck Finn is here. Okay. Yeah. We should uh, not forget to talk about this because I do okay. have way more questions. And after um, Huck Finn, we bet, well, better do over, uh, we better do uh, supporting our supporting members and the ad reads and then yep. we'll talk more about yep. that. 
Okay, then I'm gonna start uh, kicking people off here. Then okay, should I do an ad read while we're doing? Oh yeah, you might. Yeah, you might as well do an ad. Okay. Uh, want to make sure to tell everyone to check out uh, Juggernaut AI for their training. It's the training that Tommy and I both use um, around people in Massonomics Gym every day that continue to use this. I guess what speaks to it most is for how long we've had people continue to use this as their training. Uh, it's retained them because of the progress they continue to make with it. Uh, so they've seen this progress just go and go and go now over a year to two years for a lot of people we've seen use it. And the reason why it's backed by the scientific principles of strength training. So it's, it's um, intelligent training that gets more and more specified to you over time. So the longer you use it, the better it gets almost uh, would be my, my plug for it. Best part though, discount code massonomics will save you 10% for the lifetime of the membership uh, makes it so it's it's only like 30 bucks a month, so you almost can't afford not to do it. But when you sign up, make sure you go to the web browser. It's juggernautai.app, and that's where you can sign up and use discount code Massonomics. Thanks, Juggernaut AI. Oh. Yeah. You've got a roaring fireplace going on behind you there. How do you like that, brother? It's I pretty thought, nice. I thought you'd have a uh, uh, big boss, <laughs> boss man, man with the yule, with yuletide log back there. <laughs> I was going to, but then that's only like uh, 15 minutes long. Uh, yeah. I couldn't get it. I wanted to get that on there. I don't know. Yeah. I'm using some kind of Jacoby stick here. Are we live? Oh, we're we, live. We now. are live. We're, are we're live me? on the Mastomics well, podcast with Big with Huck us. Finn. Yeah. Oh, shit. I'm not ready for this yet, buddy. I'm trying to still work out the logistics. <laughs> Just in case home? you're w- wondering, you can swear on this thing, too. So, you you stupid cocksuckers. We are live. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sitting in the, uh, the bar, not the barn. I'm sitting in the shop inside a carrot's corner. Drinking a uh, fireball whiskey mm. and diet Dr. Pepper. So, uh, Karen's Corner is not in the same building as your gym, or it is? No, this is the shop out here. Oh, we see, see, I always shop like where she screen prints oh. over there. Oh, I so is that Karen's attached to your house? The gym. No, 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 no. So, the uh, the house is up a path through the woods that way. And then the barn is directly that the other other way. So the gym okay. is in the, the barn, and this is the shop. So the shop's where Karen does all the work. Then yeah, this is uh yeah the shop the the bar, and then the shipping's directly on the other side of me. Okay. But the wow. other house, it was in the house. <laughs> so we yeah. had a three car right. garage, and everything was in that garage. And then the right, shed's right. out back. You so I mean? yep. the screen printer thing was over there then too. Yeah, the screen printer thing was over where? Well, it's just when you flipped the camera around, it was just over in the yeah. in the same building you're in. Yeah. So how many stall garage is that, or shit, or how many stalls is that? Well, this is a lot bigger. This is probably I don't know, close to two thousand square foot. The shop. Damn. Yeah, you got some. The room gym's there. probably eighteen hundred. So you got all kinds of buildings there. It's a little compound. Yeah, this compound uh, is on about nine and a half acres. Something I didn't think I'd ever get. Uh, and it's fucking, I even drank at every single spot that we have in this property yet. And I've been here for three years now. So it's pretty fucking wild out here. A little bit bigger than the shed, but I still love the shed, dude. The shed was awesome. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Oh, that's, Work. that's like everything. Like it's, uh, it's always nice when it gets better, but it's, uh, it's good to have good memories. The of humble old, beginnings. Old stuff too. Yeah. yeah. Man, I've never seen you guys on a telephone like this before. It's fucking weird. <laughs> Where are you at? <laughs> So I, where, where are you at? Why are you in a blue room? So I, I got one of those fancy lights that makes the whole room blue. Uh, it looks doesn't look the best on Zoom, but when we go to edit it, it looks pretty good. And and we're, you're in the you're in the shop. I, I'm in the room with Damn. with all the t-shirts and st- you know where it's it's this is in the basement of my house. It's uh kind of like a spare bedroom where uh where we keep all the it's just shelves all the way around me of uh t-shirts and stuff. Now, why, did, why, why, why are you guys split up? I don't get that. What happened? So, we, <laughs> big like dis- big, and, big, and yeah, big big disagreement, you know, big argument. And uh, had to, this, this town wasn't, had this to town wasn't big enough for the two us. of us. Yep. Yeah. <laughs> had to keep it together for the kids, though. Keep the Massonomics. Yeah, together. I knew there was something behind that. I thought, were, I thought you guys were breaking up. One guy's moving to North Dakota, the other one to South Dakota or something. <laughs> No, we're both in South Dakota still, but we did. Uh, it was a challenge because we've been doing the podcast for a long time, and we'd always been in the same same spot. So it uh, it did take us a little messing around to figure out 
how to do it uh, where it still feels the same. And it took us a couple weeks, and we were pretty nervous about it there for a while, and it wasn't really working. And we finally got it down right where it's just it just feels normal now. Yeah, we you both know, just not have like, like a full on studio in our house where we we hit record. Like what you see on Zoom, this Jesus. isn't the camera we use. We have another camera behind us that's actually recording. What? Us. Yeah, so we got a lot. My, who's doing all this work? Uh, yeah, so I, we have four I, I, we have four cameras then. going right now. Yeah, have four, this, we yeah. both have two cameras Holy on shit. us. It's, but you'll but, see it. Like when we we take your feed, we record this, we put it on. It makes a pretty decent video when it's done. Then. Oh shit! I'm gonna be on. I You're gotta, on video. I should have got shirtless or something, man. <laughs> yeah, you got, is, still got time. So I'm out here in the shop. It's a little cold out here. I got the old flannel on. Is that a Huck Finn barbell flannel that you can buy? Oh yeah, this is uh, the denim patch flannel right there. We're we're taking notes right now on everything we need to come out with soon. Uh, so we got to see what else. <laughs> work what on our what else do you got here. coming in the works here? <laughs> oh, we got some. Well, I can't tell you. You idiots are gonna steal it. <laughs> we got something big coming January first. I'll let you know that right now. Oh mm. well, this this comes out on January first, so maybe you want to advertise it. Actually, you know. Oh, it does. Yeah. Well, you this... know, January first is a lot of uh, you know bullshit motivation out there. So it's gonna be a lot of uh, new people coming to the gym and, and wanting to be motivated. And I got a whole little setup behind that okay uh, motivation is for pussies um <laughs> and then a whole uh video coming behind all that shit but what are you drinking uh, this is a uh a bubbly a bubbly huh? what uh, uh champagne no it's a spark <laughs> it's a sparkling water you know when you were on table talk how many beers did you drink when you were there like 14 or 15 <laughs> when we in and out when we showed up, it, did Dave have beers for you there or not? Uh, he brought, I think he did bring me a case of beer, okay. but I had my own cooler. Yeah, you had your already. cooler. Yeah, right. that's right. Yeah, right. Yeah. yeah. What, so when we showed cooler, up, Dave Dave had like three or f- four different cases of these for us to drink <laughs> while we were on there. That's awesome. <laughs> yeah. uh, I don't, how many did you drink? 15? I did. Uh, I Because then he's got his cooler of, you know, rains and monsters and all that stuff too. Yeah. So. And then he had like these big Fiji waters. I probably drank like a gallon and a half worth of uh, liquid while we were sitting there. You don't realize kinda, it though. You just start yeah. talking to him and you're just drinking and drinking. Yeah. Yeah. Well, yeah, I know. You're telling me. I, I drank <laughs> with 15 fucking big beers. I was fucking hammered by the time we were done with that show. Yeah. Good thing the white George Foreman is with me to drive me. I, I couldn't have drove. There's no way. I had to sleep in the gym. That is, that is fun being there and doing table talk with him though. That is a pretty cool experience. Yeah, that gym is, is awesome. It is. You know, I bought stuff from that guy like when they first came out when I was in high school. You know, so and it's read fun. those articles. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's funny when you're in the gym, it's hard to even tell what how, you're looking at. Because yeah, there's just so much stuff. There. Holy it's, fuck, how many bars does he have? Yeah. <laughs> that wall. We walked around and talked to him about the bars, and like he was trying to show find a couple to show us. He couldn't even find them. Like they yeah, couldn't be found in there. Same amount of bars. Yeah, the gym is awesome. And the yeah. great bathroom facility there as well. Dude, it and, is. Uh, yeah, top notch oh, bathroom. Good setup. <laughs> yeah, we drove around that little town all over. Yeah, we didn't we didn't know what the uh we didn't know what the we both had to take a shit and we didn't <laughs> know what the bathroom scenario was gonna be there. We figured it'd some be some one stall little shitty bathroom right in the middle of the yeah. gym and we didn't we didn't want to go both go blow it up right before yeah. we we're on the podcast. Battle shits before the so, podcast. <laughs> so we tr- we ended up stopping at like four places and finally got to mcdonald's and took both took dumps there and then we got there and like oh my god you had like the cadillac of bathrooms oh, right yeah. inside of this gym i was very yeah. impressed with the bathrooms uh and, the, and then the back where they have all their shit yeah you know, all their inventory uh mm. so talking about your shirts you got a new one coming out here what we were wondering since this is wrapping up 2023 do you know what uh what shirt was your best seller in 2023 uh, the best selling shirt was probably the testicle shirt mm-hmm. in 2023. Okay. I mean, that shirt would not stop selling. Did um, he? It had a couple big rounds. Was it 2023 when he got called out or when it w- was figured out? Is it, was that this past year already? Yeah, I think it was towards the beginning of the okay, year because yeah. then I replayed one of the videos, um, that I had and it got like a couple million views. And then the shirt sales just took off again, like even more than the first time. Yeah, that's right. So the second time it sold even better. And uh, when we first made the shirt, I didn't think it was going to sell because it said, you know, testicles and pussy on it. Yeah. <laughs> but it sold like a motherfucker. So that was by far, I would, I think, our best seller this, this past year for sure. Okay. Testicle t-shirt. Yeah. I really, what about you, you guys? That one at the, uh, 
That was our, our best squats one this year. Tea, maybe the best selling one of the yeah, year. That one did pretty good. It was one that looked like the Schlitz Schlitz logo, mm-hmm. and they said squats. That one did pretty well. I like I Schlitz. Know if there's definitively uh, number we, one. Yeah, this year was probably the most it was spread around. Like every year, we out, usually have like one that's easily the front runner, and this year it was yeah. spread out way more. Yeah, it's, you guys have a good uh, like the Massonomics, the, the logo stuff a lot too. I know on your sweatshirts and shit. Yeah. You know? It's it's right hard. The, the it's uh we've talked about it before. It's uh there's a lot of people selling stuff stuff out there. You know, like uh you know five years ago there probably wasn't as many people that were selling t-shirts and had a company and stuff. But now it seems like you know everyone yeah. they're all over the place. You know, it, it doesn't get any easier as the years go on. I don't think. No, it definitely gets tougher. And to come up with new ideas constantly. Yeah. Fuck. <laughs> does, Not only new yeah. ideas for like videos for t-shirts for fucking supplements. You know everything. Um, when I first started, I'm like, we got an okay buy, let's get stupid. I remember thinking, man, what are we going to do? I think that's it. <laughs> yeah. I, I got, hopefully these sell for a long time because I don't know anything else. Yeah. And build the chest came out and, you know, it kept going. So what, yeah, the... you know, I just keep getting dumber and Pappy keeps thinking of ideas and I steal his ideas <laughs> I... or I say something real stupid. What? So are, are you, are you going to have a booth at the Arnold again? Yeah, I don't know if Karen got the booth yet or not. I, I'm not really sure. I know we're having a booth for sure, so but I don't know if she got it. You're I think she did. The, yeah. So maybe she didn't. I know she got uh, a hotel room the day after. I thought she did after the after the Arnold. Okay. Any so any plans be. then? Or I mean, are you, you set it up similar to last year. You know how you had the TV going with uh, uh, the your highlight YouTube reel. videos rolling and stuff. What do you? What's your yeah? Plan? I think any, the highlight reel is good, but I think I need the line. They kind of come meet me instead. I was just like out, and people are just mm-hmm. coming. Some people are even, you know, for the booth. They just come to meet me, you know. Right. So if I can get them through the booth a little bit, maybe booth. buy something more. Right. Yeah. Right, they, right. Yeah, they just made it to me and, and took pictures and kind of. I see how uh, like Matt Benson and some people are doing it around us. Are you even? Are you guys? They they had a line. And they see you. <laughs> then they talk to you and stuff. But mine was just I'm out here just going nuts the whole time in the hallway. Yeah, you were you were the yeah, partying though. in the hall. Yeah, so everyone's just chilling yeah. in the hallway the whole time, right? Yeah. <laughs> so nobody's kind of like going by the booth first um like years right. before they kind of had to go by the booth and i have a big line instead it was just a big clusterfuck out in the middle of nowhere kind of what well, if so they I think come that kind of hurt us just a little bit yeah if they come stand and they're standing talking to you on the other side of the table at the booth or whatever it is yeah after a while they start to think oh i suppose i better buy it. you know i should yeah, be right awkward here, if i just you know? chill and then just leave yeah <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah. We, need, yeah. we need to do stuff more like that i think would, would be better we'd have a, a, a little bit better sales then um then, then last year that's the only thing i would change something like yeah, that yeah that's a good idea um, what, uh, i really like to get the brother olympics going like yeah the, you've talked about that before olympics. god i think it would be great just how i did the chicken wing thing like we'd have a chicken wing eating contest with the guy with his shirt off uh pappy on a bicycle drinking 24 beers um i don't know before a certain amount of time in four hours uh just really random stupid feats of strength is, is what I, I thought i thought of that like five years ago and just never have done it so uh, maybe this year could pappy great. drink 24 beers while uh like in four hours dr- riding a bike something like that that'd, that'd be, be tough um, that'd be there's tough no man that could do it to be him <laughs> he did drink 24 beers that's a record uh before noon he started at eight o'clock so that was on his day off at, and i think he was up all night when he did that and then started at eight in the morning so like, i think he worked the, the third shift started drinking at eight in the morning drank 24 before noon we didn't know what we counted and that was the record. So that's the unofficial record right now. People have attempted it and failed it. My friends have. <laughs> and is that is was this PBR? Or what, what was he drinking at this time? At the time, that was Paps with Ribbon, oh, yeah, yes. Yeah, yeah, Before yeah. he switched to Illinois. Yeah. <laughs> so it's even harder. Yeah. You know, and he's 70. Well, now, I mean, he didn't do it recently. But now he's 70, 71. And, he, yeah, yeah. He, saw, he rode his bike 71 miles, did 710 push-ups or something, and tried to drink 71 beers, which he never finishes the beers, obviously, because yeah. he's dead. <laughs> But, I mean, he's drinking beer from, like, 5 or 4 or 5 in the morning whenever he starts that all day long. It's like he doesn't stop drinking beer. He just never makes it to 70-some beers. Right, right. Uh, what, do you th- what do you think the Arnold, you know, your booth or our booth besides, but just the Arnold in general in 2024, what do you th- what do you think it's going to be like compared to last, last couple of years? Well, they, I heard that the Olympia was a lot better this year. So if that was better, then the fucking Arnold will probably be better. You know, kind of judge it off those, mm-hmm. the Expos. Yeah. So I think, it, you know, last year was a lot better showing than the year before uh, with people, and I think it'll be even better. I think it'll be back to normal kind of this year. 
you know, yeah. COVID or whatever the hell that was going on before. And then, you know, I think Arnold Schwarzenegger said something that's kind of in the past now. So, yeah. People I think it should it. be good. People get fired up about stuff for a while and then <laughs> yes. they're like, oh, yeah, everyone's <laughs> moved on. Okay. We can go back to uh, cashing in on yeah. this again. Yeah. Exactly. So, yeah, I think it's going to be great. Um, the, the animal cage is back. Mm-hmm. And, uh, I think that'll help bring like more power up there's yeah you know back to the Arnold and shit so yeah we're excited about the cage being back too I think it helps it make it feel more like the Arnold we always talk about you know we went several years but it seemed like in like the year before COVID in like 2019 it had just gotten so insane yeah, like when you had you the know, yeah, so... that hallway how, how that would just oh, get completely gosh. packed Insane, what? yeah, that was awesome. That was the best year ever. That's, I think so too. I'm like, really curious to see if it like, get close to that. There was years, our stretches. It felt like you were just printing money. People were just handing money to you nonstop. <laughs> yes. It was, it was, yeah. it was insane. Well, there's so many people. It was just literally like nut to butt, wall to wall yes. people everywhere. Like you could it, not, yeah. like I that aisle like we were both year. in. We were across from each other. You know, people would get stuck there and just literally I couldn't, couldn't even get see out you guys. Of it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, there's so many people I couldn't see you guys. Yeah, your booth was Sunday. 20 feet away. I mean, if we wanted to go to you, it'd take a half hour I to get to it. you. <laughs> yeah, it's fucking, that was crazy. So hopefully it's more like that this year. Right. Because, like, last this last year was good. There's a lot of, I mean, there's still a lot of people there, but it never yeah. felt like that. It's never like, no. oh, I can't get across to you. You know, like, there's never never anything like that. No, yeah, that year, and it couldn't even, uh, I couldn't even go to the bathroom. I couldn't right. go to the bathroom because it was, I went and got back to my booth in, like, two hours. So I, I always had to pee at the booth all the time and I'm drinking, you know, 30 beers at least during that time frame. And I got to fucking piss at least six times. So, yeah. What's and I don't want to, when I meet these guys, I don't want to uh, disappoint them. Like, you know, I came here to see Huck Finn and Huck Finn's fashion, you know, like I got to be up. I got to be a 12. I got to be fucking drinking beer mm-hmm. and having a good time, which I always do. But after that first day, man, it's hard. <laughs> yeah. Just the first day. Cause you get so fucked up. I'm so fucked up the first day. I go back to my hotel room. Uh, sometimes I would go out at night. Sometimes I wouldn't. I'd crash. I'd wake up and, and then, you know, Karen be hit me. We got to go. We got to go. I'm like, huh. I don't, don't want to go anywhere. <laughs> like the last day, I'm like, I don't even want to be on uh, anymore. Just leave me the fuck alone. Yeah, that's, that's what I was going to say. That's There's one day you walk by and I think you said that. You were like, it is. Yeah. Very beginning of the morning, probably Sunday morning or something. You're like, I don't want to be Huck Finn anymore today. Oh, no, man. <laughs> and but after like, I get a couple of beers in me, yeah, and the wheels start loosening up again, I'm fine. Yeah, it's an hour later where you see uh, chugging beers and throwing up. Yeah, like, I'm making. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, yeah. that one idiot, Duffin, man, on that Sunday morning, yeah, I had been yeah. drinking beer since Thursday. I mean, drinking heavily um, in no mood to do any type of physical activity. And then he has me run around. I'm glad I didn't like pull every muscle in my body that time, that tag <laughs> event. Well, you were, you were, didn't you, you laid out for that. I mean, you were, you were diving I'm a showman. and go, yeah. <laughs> I'm a showman. I had to do it. You know, I knew if I was going to do it, but I had to do it right. So, you know, I acted like an idiot. Um, I landed on my head at one point. <laughs> I mean, yes, I did go all out and uh, it's a good thing. I didn't get more hurt than I was, you know? Yeah. Yeah. So, that was a good start to my Sunday. Uh, Holy you shit. Got, you guys, let's get stupid. You and Tom, you just uh, did two, 200th episode not too long ago, huh? Oh man, yeah, we called you, right? Yeah. That turned out good. <laughs> I could not hear like uh I listened to it, you know, when you guys after it came out and you could hear me like you could hear me playing his day on there, but when yeah. I was on the phone talking to you guys, it sounded like the you were over in the other corner and the phone yeah. was in one corner. I'm like I I couldn't tell who was talking or what was going on, but uh it, it Oh my god, what that was a that was the craziest time ever. I loved the lamp player. <laughs> um, and I got I mean you gotta have really good connections to get a live event in there it's never happened right. <laughs> never so you know I got friends in low places and we decide to have the 200th episode in the lamplighter double L auto IL best spot ever so um, tell what is the lamplighter for anyone that doesn't doesn't know the lamplighter is a strip joint in uh, LaSalle County which is LaSalle County in Illinois is has more alcohol strip joints gambling illegal gambling like it's like the wild west uh county in the state of illinois and this is where this is at not too far from where i live and the double l's been there since like 1950 or something i mean my dad went there when he was like 18 right so it's been there forever usually it just changed recently it's had lawn furniture for chairs and tables for 70 years um there's a like a 
not really a stage. There's no pole. There's no DJ. There's no lights. There is a lot of old men sitting at a square bar drinking old draft beer and not even looking at the women. Um, <laughs> most of the women are a little on the heavy side. Um, <laughs> and it's just, and it's fully nude. Um, while you're talking to you, uh, one lady had her butthole spread wide open, pretty close to me and Tom's face. Uh, it was very hard to concentrate yeah. during the show. I mean, it was just wild. And we came in there. And obviously, I've been drinking already before the show started to get prepped. Um, but we came in there. We set up a table, you know, like the Arnold pretty much. We brought all yeah. our stuff, our, our banners. I brought lights. I brought uh, the board. We brought cameras. I mean, everything. And uh, it's it was just one of the wildest stupidest i mean i wish we got on video but the video didn't turn out too well <laughs> something had happened so we couldn't post it um but it was it was everything i thought it'd be and more i mean it's it's something if, if you're ever in lasalle what is it no ottawa il lasalle county um in illinois you gotta stop there it's just uh it's a landmark you know how do they and, not uh, have a uh, poll they, they just strip- got a pole okay. in two years ago. Uh, so there is okay. a pole there now, but there is no DJ. There's no lights. I mean, is there music? The girls though? Used to have to, they used to have to play the jukebox. We'd have to pay okay. for them to play. If you want them to dance, you had to play the jukebox. Now okay. they use their phone. Still no DJ. <laughs> um, yeah. It's, what? Dude, it's so, so when wild. You, when you guys lined that up, Mm-hmm. What did like the owner was he like, was he like I don't know about this or was he like sure sounds great you know yeah so I get the owner's number and I said yeah this Huck fan I got the show right um just want to go over a couple things maybe we could do like a, you know uh, a cheap drink or something for the because I'm gonna bring in at least fifty people right right and he's like well I gotta go to darts can you call me tomorrow <laughs> like, the guy's like sixty I'm like yeah I'll call you tomorrow I'm still trying to line this up this is like. Tuesday night or something. Yeah, I fucking yeah. show Saturday. So I call him the next day and uh, he's like, yeah, do whatever you want. Uh, just don't record the girls uh, and please don't speak uh, bad about the place. And that's it. I'm yeah. like, are you kidding me? Speak bad about the place. I've been bringing people here for the last 10 years. <laughs> you know, I'm your number one fan. Yeah. And then, like I said, after the show was done, um, he really appreciated it and said, anytime you guys want to come back, you guys are definitely welcome back. Yeah. Because, when our people left, there was like two people left. This right. whole place. So like, oh, we're recording so, episode two hundred and one next week. We'll see you then. <laughs> yeah, that's what I told Tom. I said we should come here every week, brother. It's the best show ever. And I kept saying like, this is awesome. This is the greatest <laughs> show of all time. Like I must have said that thirty five times during the show. Yeah, this so, is awesome. So he this didn't care happened. about you guys recording your show. He just didn't want any camera on the on the ladies. Yeah, no, that was it. And uh, no, Pappy was there. Um, we brought a big crowd. Uh, Pappy Cowboy was Cam. immediately say yeah, Cowboy Cam was there with his fiance Dixie. Um, Pappy went to the stage, and the girls immediately went all around Pappy, and everybody gave him money. And uh, pretty sure Pappy caught a disease that night. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it was wild. His head was getting bounced off, but in true professional fashion, his glasses and his hat were still on. His body never moved. He's drinking a beer. He puts it down. The girls right in his face. <laughs> He reaches back, grabs the beer, takes a sip, puts it right back down. <laughs> Dude, was, I wish I had that on tape. It was one of the funniest. I was laughing so hard. I was crying. It was so funny. And he's like, son, I got to go now. I've got to <laughs> clean this off my face before your mother uh, smells it. And I got to go home. <laughs> and then off he went into the into the night. Do you? Uh, yeah, no, that was awesome. So that's the Let's Get Stupid podcast. Are you doing the Huckfin Barbell podcast then too? I, I, oh, yeah. Yeah, we do the Huckfin Barbell podcast. Um, you know, it's been all right. It's hard to do two podcasts. Yeah, that's what I was going to ask. Like, how how is it trying to do two? That's brutal. Well, the whole thing I'm trying to do is trying to – I thought at the beginning of the year I could do some more video content. And I thought, well, maybe I'll just do my own show and make like 30 minutes and just have some stupid shit so I can – keep uploading at least one and then another video a week to grow my channel. But that didn't turn out too good. The cameras kept fucking up and, uh, you know, I'm kind of an idiot. It takes me a long time to learn shit. So we had a lot of videos. Some of it in the beginning, it was working good. And then, um, then the camera was dying and then the audio, just all kinds of stuff happened. So that's kind of why I started it. Um, but I don't know. I'm going to keep it going. I haven't done it. I'm doing it like once a month now, once every couple of weeks. 
that's why I, I wanted to get all these lights in here and kind of get it better. But I should talk to you guys about video. You guys got four cameras. <laughs> We do have a you know, sort of figured out for what we're doing. Yeah. yeah, right, right. Um, but you do. Let's get stupid is new every. You guys basically don't miss a week. Every with Wednesday, that, but, we, we, yeah. we haven't missed a week in four years. Right, right. You know, like maybe we missed one week because of a snowstorm, but uh, yeah, no, it's either I drive to his house, three drives out here every other week. Yeah, and uh, we do. Takes, we do. Uh, yeah, that takes job. quite a bit of ded- dedication to make that happen for that long. Oh God, yeah, man. I mean, all the shit. <clears throat> I mean, me and Callis both. You know, we both got three girls, family, businesses, yep. regular jobs, um, you know, and all kinds of other shit on the table. So for us to do that every Wednesday, I can't believe we're still doing it. Well, and you guys, you, know? you live, isn't it like a 30 minute drive or something? Like how far? It is was. It? It's an hour now. Yeah, an hour. Yeah. So yeah, it's more. Yeah. It's not like Cal- you're just Cal- going across the, the suburbs, street. I'm out in the middle of nowhere. Yeah. yeah. yeah the worst part then is when you get done and then you've got an hour to drive home. If you're exactly. at his place and you get done, yeah, then and I gotta you... go to prison in the morning. It's like 11:30 at night, and I, and I yeah. gotta go back to prison tomorrow morning. You know, yeah. So yeah, that's that's the shitty part, dude. So you guys got it down, man. Uh, it's, I mean, it sounds good. It looks good. Uh, yeah, it's the same thing though. It's you know, like we do that. We record one night every week, and and we both I don't got normally kids stay up and that. Jobs yeah, and we other stuff. So yeah, it's it's. it's and it's by tough. the time yeah. we we get done, and then like getting files done, it's like no, you stay up you're up till like 11 midnight every time we do this and you know, up early the next day and it, it, it's got to go on every single week. Like, it's like, we don't take a break. So it's like yeah. every single week you, you figure it out. And it's just, it's actually crazy to think that we, you can, we've made it work that long, mm-hmm. you know, that they, we well, you guys been around go. forever and you guys have had a lot of more uh, people on your show, a lot more guests and guests are, they're fucking a lot harder, especially for us. Cause we don't know what time sometimes, uh, we can get to places or what's going on, or maybe we do it a Thursday or Tuesday instead of Wednesday. Yeah. So sometimes it's a lot harder to get us like, yes, we don't know like guys like Dan Bell and some other guys, right. Cam, those guys come on anytime. You just call them up, but to hammer down a guess, we don't, you, if you don't know who he is, uh, that's a, yeah, that's a lot harder and a lot more. You have to be ready. Nine fifteen, like today. Um, you know, you're ready. Yeah. I wasn't ready, but you guys were ready. <laughs> 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 yeah, so that's a lot. That's a lot tougher. I saw you had uh, the kicker on the other day. Yeah, hey, did you see that? Had you seen that guy's videos? He went kind of viral like the week before. He was uh, squatting five eighty five. Have you seen yes, how well, you strong? Guys yeah, just did you see? Him, hey man. Yeah, yeah right, right away. We're like, we, did well, you see his other numbers though? How strong he actually right. is? Have you seen like his deadlift? No, what was he deadlifting? Seven seventy for a double. Listen, I think that guy might be drug tested next week. <laughs> well, what 770 does... for a double. That's, yeah. I only did that for a single. And it was in my prime. Yeah. And did he, he said bench? Was it like four? He can bench for four. No, no, well, no. Listen, I think his bench is right around 400. He's, he was <laughs> he was hoping to do yeah. a little over 400 for a. Uh, well, those are still damn good numbers. Man. Yeah. For yeah. The well, he's he's like six four two thirty five or something like that, wasn't he? Like yeah. it wasn't, you know, he's not, he's not a, he- you know, he's not all that heavy. Like it's. It's crazy. Yeah. He's as strong as he is. He's kind of a freak. Yeah, my favorite punter was that punter was a kicker was that uh, Janikowski. Mm-hmm. And that guy was a real man. Was that Remember the Raider? Him? Was that the Raiders yeah. guy? Yeah. Yeah, yeah he yeah. was fucking drunk, nuts, fight people yeah. and shit. He's my I, favorite kicker ever. I liked the one Grammatica that like tore his knee celebrating. <laughs> yeah, Martin like, Grammatica yeah. Yeah. jumped up. <laughs> yeah, that was hilarious. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Who yeah, do you guys, most, where, where do you guys root for out there? You guys watch football in North Dakota, oh, South Dakota? Bi- Vikings. Most is, people are Vikings yeah, fans. Vikings, mm-hmm. but then you get some Packers, some Bears. The oh, west side yeah, of the state Packers. likes the Broncos. Yeah, the west but, side of the state's a lot more Broncos yeah, it's fans. It's mostly I guess, Vikings but, around here. Yeah. I don't mind the Vikings that much. I mean, compared to the Packers, I fucking hate the Packers. Oh, yeah. Every, well, I'm a, unless you're, you're a Packers, Packers fan, fan a everyone hates no, the Packers, no. though. That's the thing, you know? Yeah. That's, yeah. I'm a Buccaneers fan. Got to cheer for Coke Heaft. Oh, that's 100%. There's a couple alphas on the Buccaneers, so that's what yep. I've been cheering for. Mm-hmm. These guys yeah. are good. They got, uh, you know, you got Coke Keith on that team. Um, he caught a touchdown pass uh, a couple yeah, weeks I ago. I get the Packers, there. too. Yeah. Oh, yeah, that that's right. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah. You got that Tristan Wurst on the team, that tackle. He's fucking awesome. And a stud yeah. and a beer drinker. Um, you got that other guy, Luke Getke. He's an alpha. He's a guard. So, yeah, that's 100% who I'm cheering for. Uh, I'm so sick of the damn Bears. Yeah. Uh, been, oh. Every year, it's like Groundhog's Day. We go through quarterbacks and we go through coaches. Nobody works. I mean, it's got to be the owners. I, I don't know. Well, the Vikings have their own history of uh, oh, being a, a I mean, tough at least you guys have championships to your name. Like yeah. watching the Vikings 
uh, Bears game this year was just like watching two teams that n- neither one of them wanted to win. It was just <laughs> no, it sucks. Yeah, no, the Bears, the Bears are, are the worst franchise. I mean, the Chicago Bears, like the you know the biggest franchise, the original franchise in the NFL, and they're in Chicago. Right. It's one of the biggest cities in the fucking country, the world. And then you got yeah. the shit team. I mean, come on, man. Yeah. And the girl, the lady's going to die and they're not going to have a winner. You know, the, the guy that owns a team right now lives next to my dad, DePappy. He lives in a town, like a smaller town, 60 miles west of Chicago. And, that, and that's he the does owner? Lot, or... That's one of the McCaskies. Okay, the really? owner, you know, the lady's son who okay, runs yeah, the team now. The, yeah, the lady. Yeah, that's what. Yeah. Virginia McCaskey's son, who runs a team, lives by Pappy and has lived there for a long time. And he like... Umpires little league baseball games in the summer. <laughs> like, why is this guy not in Hales Hall working on the Bears? He's out yeah. Sycamore IL. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Umpire little league baseball games, you know? <laughs> yeah. Uh so, yeah, Pappy's yelled at him a few times. We've got, we've got to get you to come to uh Western Northeast South Dakota uh in July this year. July twentieth. I know it's July twentieth. July... Put it on your calendar. Yeah, so I don't think we're leaving early this year. Like last year, we I was on yeah. a family trip, and that was like my only vacation, like big, yep. big block of vacation of, of the year. So I'm hoping I'm gonna write that down if I if I can make it out there at least two days. You know, like uh, what is it, Saturday or Sunday? Saturday. Well, people are here basically Thursday through Sunday, so but Saturday's the meet. So I'd probably drive down on a Friday night late, and then stay until Monday morning or something. We yeah. we told Hopefully. uh we told. Yeah, I also I mentioned it to uh Callis and Cam and anyone we can get to come, we'd be happy to have it. Mm-hmm. Also, what you should you should talk to Karen too. We did have last year there was four or five booths. I it you it might it might sound crazy, but if you, for the if you're driving, it wouldn't be the craziest thing to set up a booth when you're here. Well yeah, and that's my my clientele too, you know. It so is. You're probably oh, right. It it would <laughs> Yeah, hundred percent. You do great. You do really it, good. You a lot of the Masonomics do- guys, a lot of crossover there. Oh, there's a ton. Yes, <laughs> a there's a bunch of crossover. people doing our meet that are big Huck Finn barbell fans. You know, yeah, we but, should come out there. Me and Karen should come out there. Yeah. I got the trailer. I got the man hard trailer. You guys seen that, right? Yeah, yeah. You guys see what I drive to the to the event in? Yeah, the old Huck Finn man hard trailer. Get that fucking hopping. Get it down there. Yeah, I like got that Luke- new truck. Lou Nutter and Keith Honeycutt, both uh, big Huck Finn barbell fans. They're both, both they're both compete. in the meet last year. Yep. Yeah. yeah, Lou Nutter is hilarious. That motherfucker <laughs> drove here for the fucking 200th episode yeah. all the way from Omaha to Nebraska. Uh, yeah. He won. He was the furthest one that arrived. Arrived at my house, drinking. Uh, immediately we got out of his vehicle. We went to the gym. I did an arm workout, and he did a he, did, he squatted in there. Um, you know, shortly before we left to the lamplighter, and then he proceeded to drink with us all night long. Um, and then he, uh, he passed out in my living room, <laughs> passed out in the living room and they got up early and took back off to, to Nebraska. But yeah, yep. that guy was an Omaha. Big Lou. Yeah. Yeah. Big Lou. My girls are like, who is that lion that's at the house, dad? <laughs> Just call him lion. That's who he is. That's a lion. <laughs> uh, you hilarious. know, I love that here. We're obviously we're from South Dakota, so we know about Mount Rushmore. Um, oh Yeah. We're bigger Mount Rushmore guys. What would be your what's Huck Finn's Mount Rushmore of beers? So if you put oh, four geez. kinds of beer to make up your Mount Rushmore of beers, what's going to be on there? Well, it's got to be Miller Lite because that's what I drink. That's got to be one of them. So that's like yeah, George right? Washington. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's uh, uh shit. Somebody didn't charge your phone. Oh, my phone just went off. Um. So I go Miller Lite, Paps Blue Ribbon. Those are definitely the two because that was the first beer I drank. Paps, my old man drank Paps forever. And then the next two would probably be difficult, though. Man, I think there'd only be two on my Mount Rushmore. Those are my two <laughs> favorite beers. I don't know what the other two would be. Nothing I, like. I mean, Tito's would be one. That's not a beer. I drink a lot uh, of Tito's. Yeah. We didn't know if you had like any like from the past, old Milwaukee or something like you know those old. Oh, beers. I might put old Milwaukee on there. My grandpa, old Milwaukee, and old style. The beast, probably those old two. style. Okay, because I yeah. drank those a little bit when I was younger. Because Grandpa Finn drank old Milwaukee, and then my uncle Nino would drink old style. And then we go to the Cubs games, and that's all I would drink uh, every time because that's like a staple. Um, okay, at the Cubs games is old style. I don't so, yeah, old know style. old style. <laughs> I'm old not sure style. I've ever had one. Old style is awesome. You guys got to have one. 
there's a guy down here. Once all that Budweiser stuff happened, a lot of people went to old style light or no old Milwaukee light. Everybody went to not old okay. style light. Mm-hmm. Old Milwaukee light. It's I'm like, cheap, I didn't really feel made. I didn't I know think, they made that. I think you can get thirty racks of it, can't you? Mm-hmm. Yeah, it's got that. Oh yeah, going it's like a it. blue can instead of a red can. Yeah, yeah, that got pretty popular around this area once that Budweiser stuff went. Bush all those light. Guys, Bush Light, I'd say over like the last five or ten years, has gotten so popular, at least around here. I don't know if it's like that there, but oh you know, yeah, the, it's because the country stuff, you know. Yeah, right. The corn, right. more and blue that, collar. Yeah. And yeah, they do the cans. They do the corn cans here for Illinois. Right. I don't know what they do out there. Yeah, but when I do Mount Rushmore too. out there or something. No, they got the corn. No, ones it's too, the corn too, ones yeah. too. But when yeah. I was uh, when I was like in college, it was like Bush Light was just one of the cheap. It was like Keystone and Bush Light were the exact same. Oh, I knew like, yeah, way Keystone more people, uh, way more people yeah. drank Keystone than Bush. Like in my opinion, yeah. at that time, and that flipped and somewhere in the last yeah. five to ten years. I don't see anyone drink Keystone Light hardly ever. No, you don't you ever see anybody drink Stones anymore. No, I drank <laughs> a lot of those too a long time ago. Yeah, a thirty of Stones, a thirty yeah. rack of Stones. Oh, yeah. You were set. You show up with a few yeah. of those. I, I think I drank a 30 rack of those one time in my dorm room in Macquarie College. I fell on the <laughs> stairs after a football game and I couldn't get my cowboy boot off the next morning. My ankle was so swelling up. Thanks to Keystone. Yeah, Keystone, Keystone White. Keystone. Yeah. Keystone. You, what, what, if you're really feeling uh, crazy, you could get Keystone Ice, which was like the black mm. Keystone, yeah. which is like well, what it, more. No alcohol. way. And there, yeah. was, there was. Yeah, I know what you're talking about. There was yeah. Keystone. What about Ice House? You there was drink Keystone Ice House? Regular. That was the yeah, red cans. Not, what was those? Oh, like. What like Keystone Diesel? Just like or Keystone like, Heavy, yeah. It was a red yeah. can instead of blue. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I don't remember that one. Yeah. I, I remember Ice House. Yeah. And my mother in law yeah. still drinks Ice House. Like I <laughs> went to her house and I, we didn't have beer on ice or something. We drove like 10 hours. She lives in Tennessee. We pull in and they're sitting on their porch. And I'm like, hey, you guys got any cold beer? And they're like, yeah, here, reach in there, grab one. I reach in, it's fucking Ice House. They're like, who the hell's drinking Ice House? <laughs> you know, and then uh, Grandma Barbell's drinking fucking Ice House. So I have to drink 10 Ice Houses. <laughs> then like a fucking quarter or no, a half bottle of Tito's after that. And then I'm, I was out in the woods, howling in the woods and everything. It didn't end up good. I ended up fucking with Doritos out in the woods sleeping. Uh so, okay, yeah, do so, not mess with Ice House, boys. Uh, did well, you that was say, a good mop. Okay, oh, your, your in-laws are from, did you say Tennessee, right? Don't you guys, is that where yeah. you guys go? Okay, are you guys yep. Tennessee football fans too? It, yeah, I am. Do you, know, yeah, do you know where the Tennessee head football coach is from? Uh, that new guy? Mm, I do not know. I know the head, the offensive coordinator for Nebraska, which is by you guys, is yep. from where my in-laws are from. My uncle okay. or my father in law knows him very well. And he uh he coached down there. But no, I don't know where that guy's from. Don't tell me South Dakota. He he is from the the Are you serious? The headquarters, Aberdeen. Yeah. Yep. Yep. God. Right here. Yep. No, that uh, guy, I mean, he's done great down there. Last year they hit a hell of a team, man. No, they beat Alabama and all that. That was awesome. Yeah, well, they were ranked this like will be- top five for a or were they five or six mm-hmm. at one point? Yeah, yeah, they were um Yeah. Yeah, they were weren't they were all having cigars in the locker room when they beat Alabama and stuff. No, that was awesome. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Like yeah. Kenny uh, Chesney in there and fucking yeah. Peyton Manning. <laughs> yeah. yeah, yeah, that's right. Um, yeah. No, the, you'll know about, you know, Wa- Washington, what is it, Washington University, the Huskies, uh, they're lighting it up this year. You know, that you see that coach won coach of the year for college football. Do you, have you see, followed that at all, Washington? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I know that. Uh, the, yeah, the Huskies. Yeah. Uh, that coach is from – Right, are basically our hometown too. Jesus He's coach, all the college good football. Are coming out of fucking South Dakota, all, all northeast and, South Dakota, <laughs> and uh, what uh, FCS, uh, right? Yeah, That's the, the Jackrabbits. Yeah, yeah the, the, like the old one double A. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Old one, old subdivision. SDSU yeah. is about uh, South Dakota State University is about ready to win their back to back second year in a row. God. It's like the football I didn't know that of the world over here. Yeah, yeah, who knew that, dude? I didn't think anything was out there besides Massonomics. <laughs> well, that's I most of it. Football's going on out there. It, S, SDSU is a pretty legit football program. Oh, they are. Like, they, they, no, they're they're they they're good. Like you know what? Their la- their last loss was to Iowa in uh, what was that? Like two years ago. Right, right. You know they so. could they would play with a lot of the Big Ten. You know, yeah, I think so. Yeah. I think so. Yeah, some of those Big Ten schools are pretty weak. <laughs> there, there's, yeah. yeah, there are some. You know, yeah. like Maryland and Rutgers. I don't know. Some of these schools, I don't even know how they're in it. Um, Illinois has got to bounce back, though. We're, we're going to bounce back. Uh, the <laughs> best team your... in Illinois, the best college team in Illinois is uh, is North Central, who won the Division Three <laughs> title last year and should have won it this year. They lost in the last second play. <laughs> they're from Naperville. Um, okay. But the second best team was probably Northern Illinois. 
uh, NIU, if you ever heard of it. NIU. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 There's okay. Some studs come out of there. We've got this game we play with every guest. We've played it with you before, overrated, underrated. We got a special Huck Finn set of set of overrated, underrated. Oh, good, topics. good, good. So you all you got to do is decide if each one's overrated, underrated. You can't ride the line though. You got to pick. Okay. Overrated or underrated? Costco. Underrated. Costco. Oh, dude, Costco. <laughs> I've never been in a Costco. Oh, this is a good story. I've never been to a Costco in my life. And I see you guys talking about these Costco fucking chicken logs or something. <laughs> so me, I go out Christmas shopping on Monday last week. And my old man wanted to go, and then my mom wanted to go. So I go and pick them up, and we drive. We're driving towards the suburbs, and there's a, a – in St. Charles, there's a Costco. And uh, I've never been to one, and I knew Pappy had a cart. So I said, hey, take me in there. i never been in there. It's, I heard there's some cheap protein shakes in there, like ready-to-drink ones. Mm-hmm. Take me in there, and I want to get a case. Just look around. never been in one. So we went in there, and uh, well, I'm walking around with my mom and dad. <laughs> and then I start getting recognized. They're like – People are coming up and shaking my hand, Huck Finn Barbell, you know, <laughs> and they talk. And then my dad goes, you know what, son? That guy thinks you're a real loser. He thinks you still with your mom and dad probably makes all the stupid videos in my basement. <laughs> so, that, was, that was my first experience at a Costco. And the place was awesome. Um, I, I didn't want to leave. I mean, all I bought was protein shakes. But I did go over to the counter after you pay for the stuff. And I saw that chicken log thing you guys yep, talked yep, about. Chicken bag. <laughs> You got to get one I next time. I also saw a hot dog for $1.50. Yeah, $1. 50. 50. Yep. Yep. So, yeah, I never got anything. I was tempted, but I didn't get it. But I did check it out because just because of you guys. Get the chicken bake yeah, you next try time the chicken for 4 bucks. Next trip. Yeah. Yeah. So, I, I didn't know about – what's the deal on the protein shakes? What's – so, it, are the, everyone likes those or what? You said there's a limit of, like, two per customer or what the hell is the deal? Yeah, they, they got, the, like, the Fair Life or something, protein, ready to drink protein shakes. Man, they taste really good, like chocolate milk. But you can um, only ha- you can only buy two of them. That, that is yeah. How- the one that's Saint by us is only I think limit two. Yeah, like, they do that on a lot to. of their stuff. They put limits on it so you don't clear them out. Like when you a lot of times oh. on the price tag, you'll see it says limit X number per customer. Yeah, those are they're good fucking protein shakes and they're easy. A lot of times I go on the road at work and uh, I always throw in a couple uh, protein shakes because uh, fuck I don't know how long it could be on the road for like twenty four hours. Uh, you know at prison in case something goes awry, you know, if I'm on the road, somebody's right. in the hospital or something, you know, so I need extra food. So those are always good. Yeah. I didn't know, you know, the last time we were there, Tanner was for that massonomics video and Jake was buying the pure protein bars and it's the yeah. box of 24 and it's like $20, you know, yeah, you're in a gas price. station, a, a, a protein bar like is like four bucks. Or something. Yeah. These yeah. things are a dollar yeah, a piece. God, that's crazy. So that's, that's what I've been doing lately. That's a nice way to, to, yeah. to get those in. Oh, yeah, they got a lot of good finds at Costco, man. Mm-hmm. <laughs> no, I say underrated. That's the first time I've ever been there, and I fucking loved it. I like that people think you live with your parents. They're taking you to grocery yeah. shopping. <laughs> I know. It. And then, like, another, pers- another person came up, like, shortly after that, and he, my old man just shaking his head, and I'm, my mom and dad are just staring. I like, didn't know what to say. <laughs> it is so funny. Like, yeah, I feel like a real loser around, you know, they think I live with my parents is near, you know, almost Christmas. Um, yeah. <laughs> and then we went to another store right after that. Uh, what was that? Uh, Bass Pro Shops, right? And I run into the, this uh, husband and wife that, that I work with. And I don't know them too well, right? And they're like, what are you doing in here? And I'm with my mom and dad, and we're by Santa Claus. And I'm like, I go, I'm going to see Santa Claus. We go every year. And then Pappy goes, he still believes. He still believes. <laughs> so, yeah, it was, it was, a, it was a wild trip with the, my parents uh, for, for Christmas yeah. shopping. Okay. Overrated or underrated, Randy Couture? underrated man randy couture is awesome <laughs> love that guy every year well, two years in a row we did a video together at the arnold yeah. every year i see him could be a nicer guy um likes to have a good time uh his girlfriend liked to have a good time um man just a good dude first time i met him he didn't know who i was at all and i asked him to pull my uh hair off which i had a ponytail <laughs> horse glued into the back of my head i said no it's just fake because i said just can you rip it off for a video he doesn't ask another question. He asked that. He's like, huh? And I said, yeah. And he didn't ask. Boom. Ripped it right off. <laughs> and it fucking hurt like hell, man. I, I don't know if you remember that. But yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah holy yeah. shit, dude. And then he was sitting next to Ed Cohen like the next day at like the Hall of Fame banquet or something. And he was talking about it. And he goes, oh, yeah, that's Huck Finn. I know that guy. He's a fucking idiot. <laughs> <laughs> and then we, we meet him. I saw him again the following year. And then I said, yeah, Randy, we got to do another video together. Huh? What do you want to do? So how about you choke me out? He goes, well, if you sit in a seat, I can do it. 
Yeah. You know? And I said, yeah, it's Huck Finn. I'm about to get choked up by UFC Hall of Famer Randy Couture. And boom, it puts me out. Did you go lights out? Oh, yeah. yeah. 100%. I've only, been choked, I've only been choked out twice. Randy Couture, UFC Hall of Famer, and uh, Ryan Bader, who is a Bellator heavyweight champion. Yeah. Not a I bad I was going to have Bader punch me in the face, but he wouldn't do it. That was the first, you know, when I was down there with the Eat Man guys. Yeah. Uh, that was like five, six years ago. But, yeah, that was funny as fuck. Think it yeah, when Randy- I got choked out that time, I didn't know I was I was out. I thought we were still practicing because we practiced. I deadlift like 500 pounds on the mat. And after I did it, they choked me out with uh, C.B. Dalloway was there too, the UFC fighter. And uh, I got up and I'm looking around. And I thought, we're, are we still practicing? He's like, dude, you just got choked out. Come on, let's go. You got a deadlift to get on. Huh? And I'm just laughing because I don't yeah. know what's going on. Yeah. See, I didn't know I was out that time. It was funnier as fuck. Who, who yeah. do you think, uh, you know, you, you've got – some kind of semi fame you know, some famous people that follow you and stuff uh, there. You know, you talked about, like, uh, doesn't one of the tr- one of the Trump sons follow you on Instagram? Yeah, Donald Trump Jr. does. Yeah. Yeah, Jr. follows me on Instagram. I couldn't believe it. That was hilarious. Right. Yeah, he's liked some of, the, some of the American stuff, you know, like the boat video and stuff he's liked. Right, right, which that's kind of funny. Who do you think is the most famous person that you've seen that either follows you or, or has ever messaged or reached out about anything before? Um... To me, the most famous person would be Stone Cold Steve Austin. Yeah. For yeah, sure. Yeah. You know, I text him once in a while back and forth, and he'll send me some DMs and messages and funny shit. And then to like be at his house and drink his beer. Yeah. That was probably the most surreal, craziest experience of all time. Um, yeah. You know, when I was a kid in high school, Steve Austin was my hero. I mean, that was everything. It was like 15 or whatever, man, Steve yeah. Austin. And I've been around quite a few more famous people or celebrities, and I'm never nervous around them. But when I seen Steve Austin walk into that window through that door, and I'm I'm like, holy fuck, that's him with that stupid, you know, that walk, that yeah. BMS Texas band Rattle motherfucker Snake. walk. Yeah. And I'm like, uh oh. And he's like, you're the only motherfucker who <laughs> be late to my podcast. And he turns around and walks, and I'm like, oh shit. You want me to do push ups? Yeah. Get in here, let's go. Come on. <laughs> but no, he could have been a nicer guy either. One of the best guys ever. Real, like a real person, you know, not like, um, I mean, the guy's made millions and millions of dollars. He didn't act like it at all, at all. Um, yeah. He's from Texas, and and he's just a fucking hell raising roughneck. So, yeah, he was awesome. Um, yeah. I'm trying to think, like, well, Donald Trump Jr. I mean, that guy's pretty. That's famous. what I. Yeah, that might be the most famous guy, to be honest. If, you know, <laughs> that, that follows me. Um, you know, a lot of athletes, uh, a lot of wrestlers. Um. <sighs> But, uh, yeah, I, I would say Steve yeah. Austin is probably the most famous. But, yeah, that Donald Trump Jr. is funny as fuck. <laughs> it is funny. Maybe I'll be at Mar-a-Lago sometime uh, working out with uh, Donald Trump. <laughs> I like how Trump always goes to UFC events, too, because he gets a big pop, you know? Yeah, right. He right. always, like, walks out with uh, with uh, Kid Rock, you know, and he has his own entrance, yeah. too. Sits yeah. in the front row. Uh, it's funnier <laughs> now. Uh, overrated. Talk about under- a show. Yeah, overrated or underrated Clint Black. Oh, underrated, man. Um <laughs> Man, I listened to uh, Clint Black so much. Uh, his greatest hits, probably back in 2002, three, uh, 100 times. I remember uh, song number eight was uh, Like the Rain, one of my favorite yeah, songs. That's a good song. Um, uh, isn't it? What is it? What is that, what's that one line from the song? Uh, isn't it funny how the melodies bring back the memories? That's one of my favorite yeah. lines ever. Yeah. No, I, lo- I like Clint Black a lot. Uh, I haven't listened to him that much lately, but I listen to a lot of Clint Black, a lot of beers. Or drank I'm, in a bar to Clint Black. I've got a good Clint Black story. So one time, this was at least a decade ago, maybe more than that. Clint Black came and played here in Aberdeen, South Dakota. Played in <laughs> you made little, out with him. <laughs> I wish. <laughs> Breaking news. Uh, yeah. I come Clint Black. He's got it on video. It's our YouTube video next week. <laughs> oh, man. That's going to be millions of downloads, brother. Millions of hits. So, and, and it was like an, I didn't realize any of this at the time. It was like a little concert in like a hotel convention center thing. And it was like stage set up and it was an acoustic concert. So it was just like him playing acoustic guitar and n- no band, you know, nothing oh, yeah. else. Those just, are the best. That's like a it, real personal yeah. event. There. And it was just him sitting there in like on a stool, supposed to just yeah. be acoustic, but he wanted it dead quiet in there, and I was, what? you know, in my twenties. You know, we were all we were all drunk, like just uh-huh. we were just there to party, and you know, Clint Black, oh, this is gonna be great. We we're at a concert, and it's mostly just like rows of uh, folding chairs. You know, there's maybe oh, yeah. like 
40 rows of folding chairs. And we're over the whole time, like, stand it. We don't want to sit, like, sit down, like, at this, you're partying. You know, you want to be up, walking around, talking. And we're standing over on the sides where the bars are at the whole time. And uh, more than one time, the first time it caught us so off guard, we were in a group of maybe 50 people, like, all the drunk, you know, college-age kids or, you know, people in their 20s that are partying. He stopped, like, dead in the middle of a song and, like, over like the speaker over the microphone it was like yeah uh, can you guys over there like keep it down we're trying to have oh. a like we're try- i'm trying to perform here and i was like i don't like that at all yeah, it's like <laughs> Come on, um man. what like he literally like he might have been playing singing like the rain and like stopped in the middle of it to tell <laughs> oh, us to, to tell Christ. us to shut up while he's while he's performing no. and i'm like this is a concert you know like that's yeah. what people are here for i was in a, a kind of a similar situation but it was with merle haggard and okay. it was in a little auditorium at Merle Haggard. And we're going nuts. Merle Haggard did not give a shit at all. And we're sitting like second row. And I'm interrupting him and shit. We're all drunk. There's like 10 of us in the second row. Some old guy was getting mad at one of my fat buddies. There's almost a fight in the corner. I mean, it was the best time ever. So, yeah, that's uh, I don't like to hear that about Clint Black. I will erase no. every song off my uh, playlist. <laughs> not good. <laughs> <laughs> I take back everything I said. <laughs> yeah, uh, that's not good. Okay. Text them. Last one, overrated or underrated, most important one, overrated right. or underrated, being better. Oh, be better is way overrated, man. <laughs> you, know what I, you know what I always said, right? Be bad. Be the baddest motherfucker in the room. Yeah. Drop the weights. Yell. <laughs> be a bad motherfucker. Don't, why would you want to be better? Be bad. Being bad always wins. So, yeah, be better. Fuck that shit. Uh, <laughs> still still that, one of my favorite episodes. Yeah, that, that <laughs> week that that, that – what I mean, I know it's a joke now and stuff, but what, Callus was pissed, was Oh, Callus, Callus was really uh, mad, uh, and I didn't realize he was that mad until the following week <laughs> because I got – I was kind of mad. Like He's like, oh, I'm doing this be better stuff, right, which I don't give a fuck. He was already doing something else, well, whatever right. he does. You know, um, you know, I always want to do well, but then he starts all this be better stuff. And, I, and then I started making fun of him and it was great for the podcast. But I'm like, you know what? You know, it'd be hilarious. I come out with be bad. I'm going to be bad shirt. I'm going to have a whole post about how you should be bad and all this. And I came out with it the day or the night before he dropped his brand new. Be <laughs> that was the greatest joke of all time. And Cal yeah. did not think that was funny. <laughs> the next day he's like, no, I actually. I actually took offense to that time. That was not that funny. And I'm like, are you kidding me? I thought that was fucking hilarious, dude. We, we, we came out with be bad shirts. Go fuck yourself, callous. Because I, I said go fuck yourself at the end of that show or something. Yeah. We came out with go fuck yourself stickers. I mean, it was great, dude. So, yeah, that, that was good content, though. You're right. It was, so. it was funny because you could tell, though, that you were just laughing so much about it. And you weren't picking up that he, that he was not no. enjoying what you were doing. He was not enjoying it at all. And, and then, like, the next week, I had to come to his house. And, it's, uh, you know, I come downstairs, and I'm in his house. And now we're, we're, like, hardly talking. And then we get on air and fucking start fucking airing the grievances again. I mean, it was hilarious. Yeah. Oh, man, that was good shit, man. Go fuck yeah. yourself, Callis. So be, bad, be better. Be better. Yeah. Be bad, man. Be a bad motherfucker. We sold a lot of be bad t-shirts because of that too. Yeah. Uh, good <laughs> be news. Bad. Right? You you passed overrated, underrated. Yeah, I figured I would pass that. I got a couple questions for you guys. Oh, all right. Here we go. First off, these are the questions I ask. Uh, what you say? I can't really tell you, but uh, th- these are my interview questions for something. But now I've brought them onto the podcast. You might have already heard these questions. So I brought them on a few podcasts. Uh, what do you bench? What? Here's a question. This is actually a, a good question. Tommy and I have talked about this before. If someone asks you, what do you bench? Are, are, do, you, do you say your best bench you've ever had before? Your best bench you've ever had in competition? Or what you think you could go bench today if you laid no. down on a bench? And, I, always say, I always say today, and then I ask them, well, my, what do you want? My best bench I've ever done? Right, which would be a touch and go. Yep. Um, my never asked a comp. It depends if you're asking, talking like a power lifter. Yes, that'd right. be correct. But usually, normal people just want to know like your gym bench, um, right, or what right. you currently bench. So, so currently, I'm close to 500. I'm somewhere right. in the fours. Um, right. I built up to a around a 400 pound incline bench. Um, 
which I was pushing pretty good for the last couple of months or so. But yeah, I, I usually say what I currently bench um, or my best bench. Ever. Right. Yeah. That's I usually, if it's someone that doesn't know that I know barely even goes to the gym, doesn't know the difference. I'll just tell them my best. So my answer to that, my best ever touch and go in the gym is 475. Jesus. But if, it was a, if it was a power lifter, <laughs> then I tell them my best in competition is like 462 or whatever that one is. Yeah. But Kilo shit. Me, yeah. But if you ask me today, it's probably more like 400 pounds. So, yeah. yeah. But if it's someone that I know just, some guy that just recognizes you're big and wants to know how much you bench. Oh yeah, I'll just tell him four seventy five. It's my best ever. First, and I'll go with first that. Question yeah. somebody yeah. asks you. Yeah. yeah. What do you bench? So Don't talk to me like you bench five hundred pounds. You piece I, of shit. No, I never got to the. I never got to the five hundred, so I couldn't buy that shirt or anything when he got. God, it. I remember but, when Cam yeah. finally benched it. We gave it to him. It was one of the. To me, that was one of the more prouder moments of my whole life. Like, almost as good as when I benched five hundred for the first time in competition. Like that night in the Jack and Homeless Shelter which was only around for four months due to us moving. <laughs> yeah. But Cam finally hit it. I was like, holy fuck, is when Cam first started training with me, I mean, he was barely benching like 400 pounds or something, you know? Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then for him to bench 500. He's uh, strong. Man, awesome. Yeah, he is. Oh, no, he's he getting is. real strong. Yeah. Um, he's He's been out benching me here, and that's not good. I told Cam, this is a few years ago, before I tore my second pec tendon off the bone. Um, I mean, I would just play around with like crazy weights, like, Whatever he did, I'd like, you know, do You could do whatever you wanted to like, within reason. I'd yeah. have my fucking legs up in the air. I'd be blindfolded, just fucking with him, you know? And I remember telling him, if you ever bench more than me, I'd fucking quit, Cam. You'll never <laughs> bench more than me. And now Cam's benching more than me. It's not good. Yeah. Um, he had 500 on a fat bar out here the other day. It was, you know, and he's not even in, cotton, like, training. He's right. nothing. He's just mm -hmm. off season, just fucking around out here. So um, I think he's going to have a big meet. He pulled like 800. Uh, the other day squatting around 800 at least two well, so if he could put together like eight plus what was it 16 21 he he thinks he could do 22 so he wants to go 275 he's like five foot seven 275 pounds i mean he can't breathe as it is <laughs> yeah. so but i think he can do it i yeah. mean if, if all of his numbers hit he could hit uh 2200 um at this meet in march they're, they're doing yeah my uh my uh, best best bench ever for me, touch and go in the gym, 350. Competition. I'm going to have to see that. You got that on tape? <laughs> oh, yeah. yeah I do <laughs> hey, what actually. is that in the background? What was that in the background? Oh, Your my dog. dog. I got a dog yeah. back here. Okay, that was a dog. I didn't know what that was. <laughs> oh, yeah. Uh, 350 <laughs> in the gym. Competition, like 323, whatever the kilo is. And then right now, probably about 315-ish. How did you two guys meet? Just when we're Aberdeen going to the enough, local yeah. going to the local ymca lifting and there's just there's just uh only so many guys in there like at a place like that in aberdeen yeah, that you of course. and you know when i watch someone and you're like you both recognize like ah oh, yeah this guy actually knows what he's doing right you know like this like, guy's actually like like, like right actually right benching squatting deadlifting, right and right, right. so it so uh, it doesn't hey, take man, very long for all those people to find each on, other. I'm about to squat. Could you give me a squat spot real close? Yes. Uh, yep. This is kind of my max. So get real in, real snug. Yep. And then you guys became yep. best friends That's after it. that. The rest yep. is I knew it. The rest is history. <laughs> all right. What's your favorite movie? Mm. For for years, my top two were Pulp Fiction and The Good, The Bad, and The Ugly. Those were my top two for a really long yeah, time. Okay. Um, I didn't even understand Pulp Fiction. That was all. That was above my head. <laughs> Good the man the ugly though. I like that. Yeah. What What about you, Tanner? I'm gonna go with Tanner, uh, right? Sh Sh yeah, Shawshank Redemption. I think cool. is still my one. I mean, I've seen it a thousand I times and stuff, but yeah, yeah. You, oh, that's you're, a, you're the hardest a, hardest screw to ever take a turn at Shawshank. That's that is what the first question off air uh, Steve Austin asked me was about prison, and one of his favorite oh. movies was Shawshank Redemption. Yeah. So. I, was like, yeah, I can't really talk about it on the podcast, but yeah, here's, you know, what's if, going on. If it's comedy though, I might say dumb and dumber. Dumb and dumber is my all time favorite. 100%. Yeah. I watched that probably a million times when I was a kid. We talk about mm -hmm. dumb and dumber a lot on here. And, uh, I was thinking of like what my favorite com, you know, what, what, uh, what I would say for comedies. And I think it's dumb and dumber, honestly, like I th it might be my favorite. Uh, Austin comedy Powers movie. is up there too, though. Yeah. That's so, yeah. So stupid. I like old school a lot too. Yeah, you know, we talk school. about yeah, Will Ferrell a lot and the old school. Old is, school is probably my favorite Will Ferrell movie. Yeah. It might be. I think I like one. that better than Step Brothers. I like that too. Tell Day and Nights is good, but 
Um, when I was a kid, it was Animal House, Revenge of the Nerds, and Dumb and Dumber on repeat, those three. Yeah. And then, uh, you know, later on, I liked uh, Billy Madison. I liked Tommy yeah. Boy. I loved yeah. Chris Farley, a Black yeah. Sheep. I mean, it's kind of the same movie, but. <laughs> it's the um, same movie. <laughs> Chris Farley was like another one of my heroes. And I remember when he died, I was walking in an art class, and my art teacher told me. It's like 1996 or 7 or 8. I don't know, one of those years. But, yeah, that was a sad day. Um, yeah. What's your favorite food? Fire me what you got on that one. That's a tough one. I I always struggle because I could say pizza, steak, or tacos, and it's kind of kind of depend on my mood. But yeah, uh, pizza and steak are my favorite. Yeah, I would probably say uh, really good steak. Like we had uh, over Christmas, one of our meals was beef Wellington, which is like a uh, I can't remember what cut that is, but all it is is like that's something wrapped. It's almost uh, I think it's tenderloin. It's tenderloin. Yeah. So I can't, I actually don't remember beef. Well, but just really good steak would be up there. Used to be pizza for me, but I've just got, I just probably had too much over the years and uh, I don't, it's, it's not up there, but I like, just can't get sick man. of it though. It's I like, so like, can't, dude. It's you know how so many pizzas good. I've had in my life? Holy fuck, dude. Uh, a Jack's pizza once a week minimum. Yeah. What's I mean, your, that's once a week. What's, what's your Jack's go to? What flavor do you get for Jack's? I always get, I always get pepperoni, but I always add to it. Yeah. I always, I always doctor it up, you know, usually like right now I'm in a kick where I put a lot of, uh, Hot jardinier on it. You know what that stuff is? No. Oh, you guys are from Chicago. So hot jardinier goes on uh, uh, Italian beef mm. here. So you guys know what Italian beef is? <laughs> Not really. Oh, man. Portillo's Italian beef. Let me that... send some out to you. So is that awesome. would that have like peppers, like uh, grilled peppers and stuff on it then or what? No, no. It's got like, uh, so you got uh, Italian beef on this on this kind of bread. Oh. You know, almost like a sub, but better bread than that. Then okay. they dip it into the juice, and then they put mozzarella. I had to look. So hot jardiner, jardiner, that's like the peppers kind of, right? Yes. Oh, okay. Like jalapeno peppers and stuff. Yeah. It's yeah. like a mixture. It's got a little oil on it. Yeah. It's like oh, pickles yeah. or something. Oh, it's yeah. awesome, man. And I'll put that on my pizza now, and I love uh, it. It's okay, yeah, it's I can great. see how that'd be good. Yeah, yeah. I like that. I, I'm going to have to do that one. That, that, that does sound good. Yeah, and I always use the pizzazz. You guys got pizzazz out there, right? Oh, yeah. We're big. It's uh, been we've, years we've since I've had a pizzazz pizza, though. I think the pizzazz was sitting right out here. I got, you know, I've got several pizzazz. I got one right here. This is the top for pizzazz right here. Right you know, oh, yeah. want to know something <laughs> funny about pizzazz? I think this is the the way the story went. We had uh, Pete Rubish on our podcast a few years ago. Oh, he's back. from Wisconsin. Yeah. Yeah. And he was talking, Pete likes frozen pizza better than he likes any restaurant pizza. He loves frozen pizza. And he was taught, we talked to him a long time about frozen pizza and Dan Bell listened to that episode and I'm pretty sure Dan Bell ordered a pizzazz and had it mailed to Pete after our episode. <laughs> Did he? Yeah. yeah. He didn't have a pizzazz? <laughs> no. Holy no. Shit. I forgot and about Dan that. sent him one. Yeah. That's awesome. I love that. <laughs> Bell ordered a pizzazz. I gifted a lot of pizzazzes as well. That's a really good gift. Go to the local farm and fleet, pick yourself up. It would a be pizzazz, kind of man. a funny gift to give someone now. Like they're like, oh, fucking pizzazz. <laughs> I think uh, one of my buddies, I think it was Jersic. Gave Tom Callis a pizzazz for like his wedding gift or something. I don't remember what it was. Well, like but 20 years ago, a pizzazz was like, there's always these like real popular little like the kitchen George appliances. Foreman grill, yeah. The pizzazz. yeah, like right. for a while yeah. it was like the pizzazz. Everyone's like, oh yeah, you just put it on there. It just spins around. It cooks. But it seems like they only there. have them in the Midwest because everybody from like out West, like California or other, other places, uh, not where I'm from. They always ask, what is that thing? Like Jujimufu. His message to me like every time I show it, he's like, "What the fuck is that? What that robot's gonna take over your house? Get out of your house now!" I'm like, it's a pizzazz, man. You've never heard of oh, pizzazz. Yeah. Man, in college, like 10, 15 years ago, whenever that was, everybody had those things in their, in yes. their college houses. Every college house had a pizzazz. And you, you could cook a lot of stuff on a pizzazz, actually. Oh, I cook just, a lot of shit yeah. drunk on that thing. I woke yeah. up the thing spinning with like random items on the pizzazz. Yeah. Really. That's you a know, good thing because it won't burn your house up because yeah. true, it, it just, shuts off. Right. Instead of the oven. The oven stays on, right? You pass out drunk. What I remember, like, before pizzazzes, so it wasn't when I was very old, but, like, what a lot of people, a lot of people had, like, a separate little, I mean, you obviously had your oven, but they, people bought, like, this pizza oven. oven. Yeah. Yeah. Like this, and I'm like, what the hell's the point of the separate, tiny oven? Like the pizza corner oven or whatever the hell it is? Yeah, it's like the pizza corner oven, basically. A lot of places would have, a lot of people would have that in their garages around here. Right. The old old, uh, pizza oven, they had that little miniature thing. Right, yeah, it was like stainless either. steel or something. You know, I'm like, like I don't, bars would have that. Yeah, a lot of bars have that. Yeah, yeah. 
Mm-hmm. Like Pizza Corner, that's North Dakota, isn't it? That's uh, Valley City, North Dakota is where Pizza Corner is out yeah. of. So that's why we yeah. all, yeah. Uh, <laughs> yeah. No, I, I love actually, frozen pizza, but you guys probably don't got that good of pizza in North Dakota. Like Chicago and yeah, New York. I mean, that's good pizza areas. Yeah, we don't, don't got that. Uh, we don't got we are not known heritage. for that, I don't think. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> no, because I've gone across, I've gone even Southern Illinois. And I remember weighing in like in Peoria. And looking for a good pizza, and I'm like, and you guys got the, anything down here? They tell me it's one place. It's like worst pizza I ever had. So once you kind of get out of the, I don't know, hundred mile radius of Chicago, the pizza gets worse. Uh, or like I've been to Tennessee, and I go to eat pizza down there. I'm like, hey, where do you guys get pizza? At? You know, uh, gas station. <laughs> what? And this was before like uh, Casey's had pizza. Casey's pizza ain't bad. I, I'd mm-hmm. eat Casey's pizza quite a bit, but yeah. Like a local, like, you know, fucking, I don't know, marathon or something. They got a lady down there cooking pizza. I'm like, this is a good pizza. What the fuck? <laughs> I don't think I could ever move somewhere. They didn't have good pizza. It's my favorite food. So, you no, know, pizza's great. And it's good for powerlifting. I knew I knew that it at is. a young age. Yep. Powerlifter came in when Get I was in high calories. school and said, what do you eat? He says, Domino's pizza. So, all right, that's what I'm going to eat, Domino's yeah. pizza. That was my Friday routine. Get done with squats. Go get a Little Caesars. Crush that thing. Oh, Little Caesars! Come on, that's terrible pizza, man. <laughs> Holy that's shit. the best. That's that's the best we've got in South Dakota. Yeah, little Caesars. No, that's that's yeah, our that's nice what pizza. About Jack, I'd rather have a sloppy or what do they call it? a floppy piece of shit. That was the best, man. When that yeah. sports guy said that. Yeah, this floppy piece of shit. Um, what's your favorite song? <sighs> oh fuck! Oh. You can name one or two. Don't name three though. <laughs> I guess I'll go Garth Brooks, Friends in Low Places. Well, that's a good one. Yeah, I yeah. played that a lot. That's probably my favorite song. Mostly just because going to it live a couple times, I just so I've seen Garth fun. live once. He is yeah. good. I yeah. saw him in Vegas Lo- once. Drunk. That that has me, going to that live a couple times probably has me hooked as my favorite because I just associate the song with the sc- screen. He's really good live. Dr- drunken in person. Uh, but that's a hard question. That'd be hard for me. That's that's the best answer I can come up with. This this, what about is, Tom, this has been the hardest question so far. Oh man. I mean years ago I would have said something by John Frusciante. He's the guitarist from the Red Hot Chili Peppers. I was like so into him for a long time. The only thing I know about Red Hot Chili Peppers is that guy was naked, flee. Oh, they were always flea. naked. They had the socks. Yeah. That guy and then the under the bridge. Uh, yep. I used to listen to one song in high school before football games went in. I can't remember what it was. Mm, you think, what'd you say? Uh, well, the guitarist, though, had, like, his own thing. So I was really into the guitarist for a while, all of his songs. His name's John Frusciante. Like, but uh, I'd have a hard time answering that right now. Top favorite song all time. That's Come on, man. That's, that's a hard question. That is yeah. a really hard one, though. To pick. What do you put on hard... the jukebox? Well, see, that's the thing, though. Like, your favorite song <laughs> might not be the song you put on the jukebox either, though. Um, mine. I, I would say mine would probably be uh, "Country Boy Can't Survive," Hank Jr. or "Family Tradition." That gets played at every Finn wedding, thirty-five times. There's been a lot of uh, like wives that aren't related to the Finns, like other cousins of mine. They don't appreciate that at all. Uh, one time, the <laughs> DJ would refuse to play, it and I, I almost beat the shit out of him until he played it. And that was a wild story, but yeah, those would be mine. What now, Tommy? You, what did you say? The Red Hot Chili Pepper guy, Flea. Well, the, the Flea was the bassist. I like the electrical, the electric guitarist. Like I was big into his thing, um, but I don't. I wouldn't pick. I probably wouldn't say that anymore, though. If, you know, if I had to pick a song, um, I was gonna guess. I was gonna guess Kenny G for you. <laughs> well, that was a that was a whole different life there. You know, that was a whole yeah. different thing. Um, yeah, like, on tour with him. Yeah, God, I. If you had, if you told me I had to pick based on a mood, I could probably give you a better answer. But to say my number one best song of all time, that's a t- I, that's the hardest that's question. A, that's a bad answer, Tommy. I mean, come uh, on. Uh, Tanner gave one right away. Well, <laughs> I'm lucky I thought of that one. Otherwise, I would I was struggling. But that one well, did pop into me. That you, I what was your mar- what was your wedding song? Well, my wedding song. That's not my favorite song of all time. That's like Who a wedding that? song. Your wife? Who picked it out? You or your wife? My wife picked picked the wedding song. <laughs> what was it? <laughs> it was um. <laughs> Ah, oh, Van Morrison. I can't I think of what the hell it's called. Um, brown eyed girl. Not brown eyed girl though. Um, uh, see, and I don't. That's the thing. I don't even. I don't even know. Really, you know don't remember song. your wedding song, man. No, your wife better not be listening to this. No, she. She you probably, can be very upset. She probably won't remember the song either. Come on, um, Tanner. You remember yours? Yeah, ours is actually Garth Brooks. Also, it's um, <laughs> see, Tanner. You just uh, say Garth Brooks to everything. It's too easy. Yeah, that's an that's an easy answer. Uh, but what song is it? It's oh, 
Well, it's not. Don't tell me the locals. dance. No, no, not the dance. Um. Oh, uh, how about uh that one where the guy where, where the mob gets to the semi and runs it right to the fucking <laughs> hotel, or the right to the hotel wall? <laughs> it's not that one. Or uh. <laughs> Uh, he's got a f- couple interesting, uh, interesting, is that Papa Love Mama? Is that the one you're Yeah, talking? that's it, yeah. Papa Love Mama, yeah. Yeah. Uh, but then Mama had, there was a dad that went through it. The mom that was having sex with There's a else. couple interesting music videos that he has, actually, oh, that yeah. are kind of, kind of funny. <laughs> oh, shit, I can't remember what song. I was pretty drunk that day and night, so that's hard to. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Some of it. Mine was little... Dixie Land Delight okay. by Alabama. <laughs> I thought that was Cam's. <laughs> Cams? Oh, that could be Cams. Cams got a lot of it. Uh, I sang Dixie when I died. <laughs> I think that's going to be maybe that one, Dwight Yoakam, um, which Pappy wants me to sing at his uh, his funeral, which I agreed to. Um, that's how they do it in Dixie. That's another one. Uh, what's that other Dixie song? Uh, Hank Williams Jr.'s got one. There's like 10 Dixie songs, which will be played during Cam's wedding next year on repeat. <laughs> Um, they, are these next? I got like three more questions. They're going to get really hard now. Just thought that was hard. Wait to this. All right, all right. Oh shit! All right, name the two major mountain ranges in the United States. You said mountain ranges. Yes, Rockies, Rockies and Appalachian. Appalachian. Man, you guys are smart. Oh, Jesus, I didn't know you guys are going to be that smart. <laughs> I've, asked, I've asked these questions before to like we have people over. People I don't really know. Like we haven't seen friends. a mountain before even either. So <laughs> we just heard about them. Yeah, I don't know if you've been to lot. South Dakota, but we don't have but those. The one the one my wife's friend said the the uh, what the fuck's out there? Oh Black the Hills. Mount Rushmore Mountains. Yeah. The, the Ru- Mount Rushmore Black Mount Hills. Hills. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, the Black Hills Rally. All right. Now both of you can't answer this. So I'm gonna say Tanner, you answer this one. What's eight times seven? Fifty six. Oh man. Five, six, <laughs> seven, eight. <laughs> That's how T- I remember you that. The wrong, Tanner's the numbers guy. You picked the wrong yeah. one there. All right. Well, Tommy, this last one's for you. Now, this is going to be the hardest one out. Oh, boy. Name the five Great Lakes. The five Great Okay. Erie, Superior, Huron, Michigan. Ah, the fifth one. Um, Erie, Superior, Huron, Michigan. I mean, you can phone a friend. There's one on the other line. Yeah. <laughs> Tanner, well, what am I missing? I, I, I go with Holmes. Yeah, Same Holmes. here. You're missing yeah. the O. Yeah, You're Holmes. The o. Yeah. <laughs> it's not What's Ontario, is it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. it is? You got it. Yeah. Okay. Man, you yeah. motherfuckers are a lot smarter than I thought man. you were, man. <laughs> I thought, uh, I was going to say <laughs> Ontario, but I thought that that seemed wrong. I do not remember that The only that reason one. I can remember that is because of Holmes, mm. though. So that's, that's, uh, All right, I that, that. otherwise I wouldn't know that one. Yeah, no, that's how I remembered it, too. So, yeah, those are my interview questions. So, you guys passed. We got um, the yeah, job. A okay. couple slip-ups. I mean, especially with the song, man. That was kind of bad. <laughs> but who's your favorite wrestler? Oh, Stone okay. Cold is up there for me. Yeah, I Stone know that's Cold's a, up there. Uh, um, uh, that's a bonus question. I was – my thing is when I was growing up, I was actually more of a WCW guy, guy than I was uh, WWF. The NWO. Yeah, so then then you go, do go no NWO, but I wasn't a Hollywood or Hulk Hogan that big a fan. What? I did I did like Ric Flair uh, oh, quite a bit, too. and he's become even cooler. Like it, as we get he's older, it's just big time. His name he's is just cooler and cooler, around. you yeah. know. Uh, but I kind of liked like Kevin Nash uh, and yeah, big uh, sexy. yeah, big sexy. You kind of like, look the, like Kevin Nash. <laughs> oh, yeah, I guess kind of now. now. Where yeah, the inspiration yeah. Comes from. Exactly. Yeah, uh, kind of like Kevin Nash. Yeah, kind of like <laughs> Kevin Nash and on. Scott and Scott Hall. I like those guys. Oh yeah, Hall's dead now. He was wild. Yeah, there. he died. He yeah. was looking pretty rough before he died there. Yeah, The Outsiders is awesome. That's when I kind of watched wrestling again. I watched it like when I was a kid through the Hogan era, you know. And then uh, I didn't really watch it much for a couple years. And then the the NWO and when Hogan went to WCW. It, man, reel me back in big time all the way through, you know, the Stone Cold, that, all that stuff. So, yeah. Yeah, that's another thing. Like, I've hung out with Hogan's son a lot. He's a fan of mine. I've hung out with him a couple of times, and I want to get down there to see Hulk Hogan. That would be in, good. Down in he's Florida. guy I want to meet. Yeah, he's down in Tampa yeah. there. Yeah. Go hit up Coke Keith and hit up Hulk Hogan. It'd be yeah. a great trip, you know. You, you know who's a guy that always scared me that I thought would have been real scary? It was uh, Chris Benoit. Like, he, 
I oh, mean, come on, of course you'd say that he killed his whole family. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> I know, but like even before <laughs> that, you're right, he yeah, is scary. Hindsight's I know. 20, uh, <laughs> he murdered even, his whole family. <laughs> even before that, it's like, that seems predictable. If you just looked at that guy and his mannerisms, like he seemed he crazy. Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah, he ended up uh, yeah killing his whole family. So you were correct, man. <laughs> yeah, that one, I had that one pin. <laughs> that no, scared me a lot. The guy, the guy that murdered <laughs> the, yeah. the guy that murdered everyone. Yeah, yeah. that guy. I, I just had a feeling he was going to murder everybody. <laughs> <laughs> Tommy, who is yours? Uh, so is I that? liked, you know, like uh, the, uh, the the showmanship and everything of like Degeneration X and oh, NWO yeah. and all that. But when it came to the actual wrestling. I always liked the guys that were like flipping around and doing the craziest stuff, oh, so like, like Ray Mysterio Jr. Guys, oh, Tommy. like Ray Mysterio, the Hardy oh. Boys, like Come on, Rob I Van Dam. I love those guys. They were just <laughs> going I did like insane. Rob Van Dam, though. Yeah, yeah. I, oh, I like Dam. He did that to yep, me in this Rockford, one. Illinois, backstage yeah. one time. I said, "Tom, motherfucking." Band, and he laughed into the RVD thing to me. So yeah, he was a good dude. Yeah. I liked him. And then always the Undertaker was like always up there in my in my favorite yeah. too. Undertaker was good. He still is. Dude, I just had to He's watch. Man. Have you seen on YouTube? They have a a reaction video of the Undertaker and Mankind watching their Hell Hell in the Cell match together. Oh no, I oh. haven't seen it, but I remember watching it live in Pappy's living room when I was dude, you know, fifteen or whatever was, that came out. It was so cra- he talks about it like they're they're both like, oh, oh here we go, man. Dead. They had never. I don't think they'd ever watched it together, and they're talking about yeah. it. Easy. And he's saying how like a lot of that they didn't really have planned. They just went for it, you know. No. And then he tell he's saying like that was like the first match in North America where they like brought out thumbtacks. You know, when he's he's giving him the choke. Yeah. Sl- he's giving him the choke <laughs> slam to the through the thumbtacks. <laughs> and they said they get done with the match, and and Undertaker or Mick Foley goes up to Undertaker and he goes, "Oh man, I wish we got to do the thumbtacks." He's like, "Dude, I slammed we did the thumbtacks like three times." Yeah, that is awesome. Yeah. I loved it. when he's in the corner and is. is- his uh, tooth, tooth was in his nose. Yep. And he's just smiling. Yeah, and he <laughs> said, he's like, nose. the first time I watched it, I was like, he goes, I was so embarrassed. I thought I had a big booger hanging out. Yeah, and he goes, and then I realized tooth. it was my it was my tooth. Yeah, <laughs> It was fucking awesome, man. He's fucking great. Uh, that was one of the best matches ever in oh, the history of wrestling. You, still, you watch that to this day, and it doesn't seem real. It doesn't no, seem it possible. Doesn't. I remember when he's coming back off the stretcher. I'm like, what the fuck? Yes. Like, this is this. This is not wrestling. This is real. This yeah. is not fake. It's real to me, damn it. Uh-huh. I mean, if you think wrestling's fake, watch that match. Yeah. No, they said that was, he was supposed to slam him on top of the cage like six times before it was supposed to break, and it broke after yeah. one slam. Like, they had no yeah. idea what was going to happen. No, that was that was awesome. I remember watching that, uh, yeah, live in Pappy's living room with a bunch of idiots. <laughs> um, yeah, I watch all those. Pappy had, a, he had this mysterious box, you know, mm, and uh, we got yeah. to watch a lot Get of those. those channels, yeah. Yeah. Then we had the Spice Channel, the Playboy Channel. Yeah, Spice. Some, little, uh, little skin of mask. The mentally challenged guy took our the controls. We lost our controls one day, and uh, we couldn't find them. And we were over at his house, and I said, hey, those are our controls. We thought if he took our controls, he could get the Spice he could get channel, the channel. Playboy <laughs> Channel in the house. <laughs> There's our controls. <laughs> oh, shit, man. That, what a great time to be alive, that, man. That was awesome. Yeah. I go to Brother Time Machine right now to go back there. Amen. What, uh, yeah. where do people, if they need to buy a t-shirt or we didn't even talk about supplements, but where do they, uh, where do they go and what should they buy? Well, we got a limited apparel. What do you call that? Uh, apparel company. Yep. Limited goods, apparels, uh, hooked and barbell dap cam shirts, sweatshirts, uh, accessories. Um, we got a lot of supplements, pre-workouts, aminos. Hopefully this, Next quarter, we're trying to get our uh, product out to more stores. So, I mean, talks with a distributor, and uh, that would be good if we connect. There would be a lot more stores than we're in now. So, maybe like a couple hundred stores. I suppose getting in stores is the big thing uh, oh, supplement-wise. Oh, did we lose him? <laughs> I think we lost him. <laughs> well, we were wrapping up. We so. were. We were. Lucky for us. There's, there's probably only about two minutes left. Yeah, it was basically, uh, I guess, we'll see if he pops back in here. But if he doesn't. Yeah. Uh, uh, follow what's it? Huckfin Barbell. I mean, you know how to find this. Huckfin Barbell. Google yeah. it. You'll, you'll find everything yeah. you need. Yeah. I think. Did he mention uh, he forgot to charge his phone? Did he say that earlier? Yeah, but I don't know. Was he on his phone? I, see, that's was, what I was confused about. It was vertical, so I'm assuming he was on his phone. But okay. Um. Well, we'll see. Maybe he'll pop back in. You never know. Yeah. 
Maybe uh, maybe you should read an ad while <laughs> we we'll give us time to <laughs> wait and call, see if he pops call. back in. Yeah. Uh, this episode is also brought to you by Texas Power Bars. Buddy Caps first started lifting weights in the late 60s and began powerlifting in the mid-70s. At the time, he was working for Image Barbell, building gym equipment. Around 1976, a local machine shop started making Olympic bars for them, calling it the Image Bar. In 1977, Image Barbell became Champion Barbell. It was then that Buddy started looking at the bars with an intent of changing them for the better. Fast forward to today, and Buddy's passion, drive, and purpose. Actually, I already said that part. Buddy set out on his own to make what he believed was the best bar he'd ever seen and trained with, and the Texas Power Bar was born. It is strong as a house with the best knurling. It's maintenance-free, and it now comes in a 29-millimeter variety, which is loved by lifters all across Massonomics Gym and America. To get a Texas Power Bar for yourself and to learn more about the legend, visit TexasPowerBars.com. Amen. Yeah, yeah. No, no, no fin back yet? Nothing yet. All right. I'm assuming he's got to find a charger. Then he's got to wait for his phone to charge for a minute or two before yeah. it can boot back up. So, yeah. yeah, it could be, we might, he might be gone. That's all right. Well... We were about wrapping up with that. There was probably <laughs> we're about to run just, out of minutes here, anyway. So we were just going to say our pleasantries <laughs> to wrap that up, anyways. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll we'll, we'll pretend to be like, oh, well, I'll see you at the Arnold then. Yep, we'll see you there. <laughs> yeah. Okay, bye. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> there it is. Yep, you finished the whole thing up for us. There we go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> there, that's it. Uh, I'll also mention supporting our supporting members while we're thinking here just to see if it comes back on uh this is a relatively new segment of the podcast where we give back to the people that give to us they give to us in the way of supporting membership you can uh sign up too we'd love to have you join go to massonomics.com slash join that's where you can find out more about our different supporting membership options we'd love to have you join in on the crew you get things like access to our exclusive discord community you can listen along to our podcast live you get to uh, have early access to drops. We do special merchandise that's only available for you in there. We've got something new coming up here. Pro- I don't know, maybe within the next month, give or take, that uh, we'll mail out for free. We do free mailings to the crew, and uh, everyone that's a supporting member at that point in time will get in on it. So if you are thinking about signing up, now would be the time, so you make sure to get in on that. There will be a line on the sand eventually where people no longer can get in after it, so make sure to get signed up. And then each week we give back to a few of them. So number one on my list this week is Big Carp. He was the guest on Unpaid and Underrated, and that's who we stole the Mount Rushmore (laughs) segment from. So Big Carp was the inspiration of the Mount Rushmore segment, and who better to be the Mount Rushmore segment guys than the Massonomics podcast guys from South Dakota. So, of course, course that's us. And then uh, just to shout out a couple other people that were recent joiners to the crew – uh, thank you to Big Brian, Large Colton, Enormous Luke, Giant Jason, Big Anthony, Big Daniel, Big Ike, Big Ron, and Big Dalton all yeah. joining up here le- recently. So thank you to all of our supporting members. Tell a friend. Grow that number. Yes. Yes. Please. Well, he's not coming, is he? <laughs> I don't think so. I think he's. Right. I think we've lost him. <laughs> uh, that's fine. We'll, we'll pour one out for him. <laughs> yeah, we'll pull, pour pour uh, old style. Uh, what did he? What uh, old Milwaukee is what he ended up reverting to? What was the style. other kind though? Old, yeah, old, old style. style. I gotta see this. Is that it reminds me of like forties? Maybe is it, did forties come in? Yeah, it looks a lot like the old Milwaukee. I think that's why I'm getting mixed up. If you Google it, it just has kind of that shield logo, yeah. which Old Milwaukee, I think, does the same thing. Maybe not. Half of them have no, that, kinda, really. They sort of do, but, yeah, I don't think I've ever had an old style, though. I don't. I have not. I think it's safe to say I have not. Have you ever had an Old Milwaukee? Yeah, I, that I have. I've had, it's not something I would I've had purposely a get. a couple, is all. Yeah. Have you ever had a Schlitz? TBR is... I don't think so. I don't think I have either. That one's actually kind of hard to find. Yeah, I don't think I've actually had that. I've seen it being drunk before, but I've I've never I've never personally had it. Yeah. Uh the follow up on books. Someone asked. Mm. Someone. Yes. Someone said. Uh, 
you know, my initial thought is like, how could you ever read that many? But I, as we talk about it more and more, that's part of how is like she literally like by the math can read them probably five times faster than I can. Right. Okay. So, okay. So yes. And I had follow up questions. So my one follow up question was, okay, does she do the majority of the reading on, on the Kindle? Is that what she's typically reading? on? No, a majority of the reading she does on her phone. Oh yeah. my God. See, that is insane to me. Yeah. That is actually insane to me. Cause yeah. I was going to ask, okay, if it's on the Kindle, then is she doing anything to like make the font bigger and she reads faster that way or, but no, phone, like phone. you just have so little room to do anything. Yeah, it's on her phone. And uh, the other thing, too, which makes it possible, and I probably talked about this last time we did it, but I haven't seen my wife watch anything on a TV show or movie. People like, don't know it, this, but your your wife is Amish, so she's not allowed right. to do those things. That's, like, I, over the course of, just say the last year, for example, I've maybe gotten her to watch, like, two movies with yeah. me. <laughs> like over the last year, in the last year, I wouldn't be surprised. Like, what's what's not an uh, over exaggeration? Like, in a month. Well, I'm kind of a movie. I'm guy, guessing so she's two doesn't sound crazy to me. Well, like I'm guessing she's what between television and movies over in the last calendar year, watched like fifteen to twenty hours of television. So that's pretty crazy. Right. And does, she, and does she spend, you know, we're, we're got mass anomic stuff going on. So we consume a fair amount of social media. Is she consuming much social media? No. I mean, yeah. she, a, she has, uh, she has like TikTok to look at sometimes or like mm-hmm. Instagram reels. She'll look at, you know, she's not active on so, any social but media she's in any way. Less than a half hour a day of social media. Right. Yeah. yeah. Like she'll not even open that stuff quite a bit. And also like, she a lot of she reads when she's in bed mm, a lot yeah. like when she's like like so she'll spend like like the whole time we've been doing this she's probably been reading yeah you know that's what I kind of wish I could do that it's just I'm so tired oh, by the end of the day I just fall asleep I can't even movies I can't even like watch movies at the end of the day because I fall asleep no nope, and I want I, I have either. every intention of watching them and I can't. I can't read or watch movies or even watch YouTube on my phone. See, all of it. The only thing I can really do sleep. is YouTube because the videos are typically short enough that you're not, or, or there's just enough yeah. changing of what's going right. on that I, that that's I, what I always figure that they're, Oh, it's like, Oh, this is a 10 minute video. And I'll be like two minutes in, like I'll be fairly alert at the start of it. And like by like minute three, I'm like, well, I must, I'm sleeping. I always, you know, like, I always like, that's a, that's like a, Trick. Well, you've you've said firsthand that you get surprised yeah. how fast I can fall asleep. Oh, you're that, the <laughs> you, you have a that's a superpower. It is almost like a power that sometimes I surprise myself with. Like this past yeah. weekend, I'm like, okay, uh, we had like it was like Saturday night. Everyone was going to bed for the night. I'm like, you know what? It's nine thirty. I'm the only one up. Let's do a little car YouTube. And I started up, and there's like a fifty minute documentary on a certain car. I'm like. I think I could actually get through like half of this. I think I can watch yeah. 25 minutes of this. Yeah. And uh, all of a sudden I open my eyes and the, the documentary is 40 minutes in. I'm like, where did I even fall? I don't even know when I fell asleep. So then it's the fun game of like rewinding, like where, how far did I actually make it into this? I made it like six minutes in and it, and then I woke up at the 45 minute mark. So, yeah. So do you like go back to rewatch that? So in that case, in I'm like, well, I'm just going to figure out where I'm at. And then once I figured out where I was at, I kind of got hooked in again then. And i had a little power nap. So then I felt refreshed. So then I ended up watching about 20 minutes, but I did still have to call it quits. Yeah. I've been looking, uh, maybe someone out there can refer me because I've, uh, wanted to find, uh, and I've Googled and found, or just like searched and found some, I want a podcast that's like pretty specific to like C10, C10 trucks. And there's a bunch of them, but I want to, I want a good recommendation because I found like just the first one I found and I started listening to it and I'm like, I actually had this really funny revelation that I'm like. Oh my God, this is what happens when people stumble upon our podcast and we've been doing this for like <laughs> yeah, 80 years. Right. Like, and they're uh, like, what where, the fuck where do is I this? Jump in at? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and because that's what they're like talking, like this was, I found an episode from like 2020 because I really liked the title of it. Mm-hmm. And it, they were talking about how they're six years in and like going on uh, all yeah, this stuff. Yeah. And I'm like, oh my God, I just want to hear about like. <laughs> Yeah, get rid of the content, damn it. Timestamps, you said, right? <laughs> but I'm like, it, I swear to God, this was like the Massonomics podcast of C10 Trucks. 
And I looked, and I'm like, how popular is this? And it has like thousand, like a couple thousand reviews, and you know, it's like definitely a very popular podcast. That is and awesome. I'm like, oh yeah, yes. this is exactly what people you feel just, like, like when they're into an alternate universe. All of a sudden, <laughs> it's, like, it's like the whole start Tyler and Tony. <laughs> And they live in North yeah. Dakota. <laughs> yes, yes. Uh, so if someone knows of like a good, uh, <clears throat> but I don't, you know, there's also different genres because some could be very mechanic heavy yes. and some could be That's a, like, uh, that you know, was, I can't. So yeah, the, the automobile, auto you two are, I guess I should just say car world was like the last hobby that I kind of came into blindly. And that right. was uh, one thing that uh, I've noticed is, Okay, do you want someone that's talking about the engineering side of things? Do right. you want someone that's just talking about the Yeah, that's just what I was thinking. Having, do you want yeah, do you want the person that's going engineering right. specific? Do you want the person that's just talking about having fun, you know, driving your car around? Do you want someone that's like giving the history lesson of how the designers came to this and made it and everything? Like there's right. and each there's channels that do a little bit of all of it. There's channels that go really hard into one of those and don't touch the other ones. And you got and then there's also of those channels, there's also people that take a more serious approach to the right. engineering side, and there's people that do a funny approach to the engineering side, and there's so you got to find like the brand that whoever's brand speaks to you, and it can take honestly years to find that. And that's what, it, and like this one really was the massonomics version of that, where I like they just are maybe like a little surface level of all of it, mm-hmm. you know, and I'm like, well, because what I really want is almost like uh, the at home mechanic podcast of but Just but not of all CJ. vehicles yeah, i want it specific to like is <laughs> yeah. as specific to my you know i want like the at-home mechanic uh-huh of c10 pickups <laughs> yeah. especially 67 to 72 but like yeah, <laughs> right. I can, you can only narrow it down so far <laughs> yeah before um, they, they run out of content to <laughs> right 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 so but that if anyone has any any leads good recommendations that. it's almost like uh car talk only i want it about these pickups. And that you is know. funny you say car talk. Out of all of the stuff, I still have never really listened. I've maybe listened to an hour of car talk in my entire yeah. life. Yeah. I think it's pretty, I mean, obviously it's good in the way that it, the proof is in the pudding. Yeah. But, you had know, to be around like, that long. Right. Um, and, the, and I actually, what, so then my overall takeaway is I got overwhelmed and I just kind of backed out of all of it. And I'm like, yeah, I don't need a new podcast genre. I guess I can't. Right, yeah, yeah. You how know, many, I was just like, I How I deep do I need can't. to go in this rabbit hole to either find out <laughs> there's there's even more I want or that I hit a dead end? You know, do I invest 20 hours right. to find out this was the right path or the wrong path? Right, right. Yeah. Yeah, that, and I just, that's probably what happens, like, to half the people that stumble upon the Massonomics podcast, isn't it? That they're like, <laughs> like I can't, hard do I, I can't sort here? out what's going, like, what, there's a, like, where you're just like, there's so much going on here, I could never figure out what's mm-hmm. going on here. I don't have the time to get caught up on any of this, 400, <laughs> let me just find a podcast that's just starting, it'll be easier for everyone. <laughs> that's kind of what I, and that's actually what happened to me. Mm-hmm. But then I'm, that's not a very good advertisement for Massonomics then because it's if not. you're coming in new, you're like overwhelmed with it and you're just like, yeah, yeah I just oh, will stay scrap out Scrap it. We need to start yeah. over. Here we go. <laughs> Starting a new brand. <laughs> well, because then it, too, I'm like, I don't want to, then what do I do? Because I don't want to go back to the beginning and listen like 2014 of like, well, well but this the is current what, event thing. I guess are, by that same logical, I've done this with people where I find, if I'm going to say on the car, on the car genre, of yeah. people that I know from either seeing their name brought up or just seeing, see, hearing other people talk about them or just always seeing them come up in search results that they are clearly one of the big names in the space. You go look, they have a thousand plus videos. Yeah. And then what you do is you do the thing that I hope people do for us is they click on the ones that they understand, the names that stick out to them. And they're right. like, okay, I want to see your version of this review or this person's interview. And you're like, okay, I've watched a few of those. I get what you're doing. Now I'll start to like spread out into things that I don't care as much about because <laughs> right, I'm, right. I'm just interested in your flavor of how you do it. I mean, right. that's the that's the dream is that something is the, like that happens. Yeah, yeah. That's what hopefully happens with mass economics. <laughs> and, though, I mean, too. there are people, people tell us, like there are people that do that. You know, they, yeah. they get that in through whoever it is. And then they say, I'll do a little more digging. And next thing you know, you're in a discord. Flying it's always a funny falls. feeling. Well, it's always a funny feeling to me, though, that there's like someone out there, this episode, 
is probably the first episode that they're listening right. to they're of like, the Massive oh, Podcast. Oh, Huck Finn Barbell? I love that guy, and I've never yeah. heard of Massanomics, <laughs> which is that would like, see, That really feels like a stretch. More, oh, Huck Finn Barbell? Okay, he's talking to these Massanomics guys again. All right, I better <laughs> at least give them some due this time. And, right, and right, right. Out. Okay, here we go. <laughs> yeah. All right. Uh, speaking of made in America, black e coated, uh, affordable, high quality, best in the market oh. Olympic iron oh. barbell plates. You have my attention. Speaking of all that stuff, yeah. uh, make uh, you, sure to check out I, I thought, the strength code. I didn't know if you were going to add plates at the end because you were going to lose me if you said all that and didn't say plates, but you said <laughs> No, plates. it's plates. Okay. Uh, check out the, the strength.co is where you'd go on your web browser to check them out, and uh, then you'd browse around. they got a several things on there, but I like the plate section. It's my favorite section of their site. You can either go to the Olympic iron barbell plates or the Olympic bumper plates. Uh, we've got a whole bunch of both at Massonomics Gym. The bumper plates are much newer. Obviously, you can get those in a 250-pound set, which includes a pair of 45s, a pair of 25s, a pair of 10s. Uh, actually, two pairs of the the bigger ones and then the pair of 10s. So it'll kind of, for 400 bucks, you get everything you'd need in the form of bump, bumpers for almost any lifter. Uh, so a pretty sweet deal there from the Strength Co. And then, of course, check out the iron plates, which are my personal favorite plates uh, that have ever been made. And I've got a lot of different kind of plates um, and the strength co takes the cake. Check them out at the strength.co. Buy all your plates, hundreds all the way down to 1.25. Get a pair of 1.25. If you don't have a pair of 1.25 pound plates, go buy just uh, that pair from the strength co. Check them out. Speaking of military surplus from countries across the world and <laughs> America and <laughs> Europe and Asia and check bedpans and all of that speaking of all of that speaking of it <laughs> just speaking of that um have you heard of swiss link oh <laughs> just have you heard of them have you if, if you're yes this? i have i mean the, they uh they have the mission to bring authentic swiss army goods to the united states and into the hands of those yearning for quality gear at uncompromised prices and over the years that mission their mission of quality goods has expanded to nations across europe and beyond. SwissLink.com is home to the classic SwissLink wool blankets. It's also home to the classic SwissLink uh, wool pants. Wool pants. Also home to the classic SwissLink aluminum two-piece beast shovel. Also <laughs> home to the SwissLink classic Czech Army backpack made of rubberized vinyl. And also home to the Czech Army issue M60 canteen. Yes, SwissLink is home to a lot of incredible things. Uh, SwissLink's exceptional collection and dedication to quality customer service distinguishes them from the rest. Enjoy a 15% discount on your next purchase at SwissLink.com by entering code MASS at checkout. That's M-A-S-S at SwissLink.com. That'll save you 15%. Thank you, SwissLink. Any big New Year's resolutions this year, Tommy? Uh, I was going to ask you that first. I guess my first New Year's resolution would be to uh, figure out what my favorite song of all time is. That is one of the hardest questions that anyone... That's a tough question. I, I've... I, it's I, hard to say a song. Yeah, a song because to me... A movie is also a hard question to answer yeah, to me too. Movie, I, I just don't have strong, really super strong opinions on like a uh, one. Th that's... I I struggle with... If you tell me to do favorites a lot... I, Clearly, you can listen to that. I struggle with favorites. Yeah. I'm just going to give you things that are in my top favorites. But uh, the song one is especially hard for me because songs are so mood dependent that there's right. a lot that like, oh, I love this song. But there's certain times where I'm like, I don't know. This doesn't really do it. Like, I was so into just partying music forever. And it's right. like, yes, this is great. But there's a lot of times where I like, don't want to listen well, to Well, you wouldn't maybe say that's your favorite all-time song. Yeah, and that's for why it's like, well, but also you... like these are like more kind of superficial, just amp up songs. And right, it's not right, doing right. anything deep and meaningful, but doesn't need to do that. But Right. And then it's like, well, but also my favorite song, if I'm going to go with something deep and meaningful, like, I don't know. When I think favorite song, I'm thinking that's maybe the only song I'll get to listen to ever if we're going to put constraints on it. Would that yeah. want to be the only song I ever want to listen to? I don't think I'd want to pick that one either. So... That's where that gets really, really tough for me is I, I hyperanalyze, overanalyze it. Um, yep. But New Year's resolutions, 
that was the original question. No, I don't really yeah. have one. Uh, I guess my the biggest routine I have at New Year's now is we have a couple businesses. I always enjoy doing the year in review for the actual numbers mm. of the business. Yep. Uh, seeing how that works out. Usually we have a, I mean, there's no surprises, but usually once you do a little deeper dive for the whole year, you see some trends that maybe yeah. you weren't aware of. Right. Um, as they were happening, and it, it solidifies things that actually what didn't happen. Like you have things yeah, in actual right, numbers. Right. So I always enjoyed doing that, um, but that's not really a resolution. That's just maybe more planning. A year, um, yeah. If I had to say, I guess I don't I actually, I don't do resolutions. I, I think Neither do I. I think I, we're probably both on record yeah. for many years of saying that that's Yeah, not I don't really do that. Like, but if you were to say like, oh, am I going to try and do something different in the coming year? Mm, not really. Not really. Probably the biggest shift is just now having two kids and now that they're both pretty soon you know my, my son's three my daughter's like almost one and a half and she's starting to yeah. kind of say words and so like things are gonna change a ton in 2024 when she actually just starts straight up talking with us yeah um and so then it's like oh damn i got two kids here that are both talking and uh, conscious and aware of what's going on like, like when they're not babies yeah anymore. like yeah they're they're just we like, don't have like yeah. a, a little tiny kid and then a baby that's just like there right. no, like we have like two kids now uh, that's yeah. going to be uh, a big change, and I'm looking forward to it. But, yeah, that, that's kind of it for my my 2024. What about you, Tanner? You know, resolutions, I don't – I just, when I want to start doing something, I would never wait for the yeah. new year. You know, it's like I know, that's like, like, when yeah. I strike why, why when the iron – Why not do this? <laughs> yeah, right. Like, I, so I – so I would never have one because I never I'm not I don't hold on to any good uh, things I want to start implementing. And then I'm like, <laughs> right. okay, I'm gonna I've been keeping I'm this gonna... into my back pocket for the last <laughs> nine months. Oh man, it's gonna be yeah. good though. Because <laughs> I mean, like my things that changed were like having another child, and uh, um, then over 2023, I'm at the end of it now. I'm like we've certainly talked more than enough about is like being a little bit more of a mechanic guy. So I'm wanting to learn more, you know, I'm want expand my knowledge so I can do more stuff and, uh, which I already have a lot, but I'd like to just take that, you know, five more levels right. deep. You're you going to open Western Northeast South Dakota customs where you're like adding all types <laughs> of crazy shit to people's trucks that they didn't ask for. That definitely would not be the pro- progression <laughs> yo, there. Like yo, I, we heard you like grilling. Yeah. We added this griller yeah. to your C10 truck, baby. <laughs> we added this ride. big green egg attachment yeah. to your C10 truck. <laughs> we heard you like uh, eating eight <laughs> eggs every morning. Yeah. So we got a frying pan. Hey, yo, we bacon. put this chicken coop in your truck. Now you have 50 chickens with you at all times. <laughs> like, oh, thanks, man. I guess uh, that show, uh, <laughs> Pit My Ride, is so stupid. Yeah, it is. Like, the vehicles they made were so stupid. They were terrible, yeah. They were the worst. But that was a really popular show. Yeah, well, I think it was, like, just the first time that people were trying the concept of just out there reality shows, and it was just so out there. The concept was so crazy that people were like, well, what the... And the guys clearly building it clearly had skills, yeah. you know? So, like, oh, yeah. if you take skills... It, it was almost like a Nathan for You concept. Like, take right. something and then just do it the wrong way, and that's what you get. You know what would be a hilarious Instagram account if it was Pimp My Ride, Where Are They Now? And it just documented well, all, any, all the, these vehicles, what what they look like now, because I bet they're all trash. Yeah, there's several. Like, they're all in pieces. Like, none of that stuff oh, was there like. Has, yes, there has to be. I've seen, there's several YouTube videos that talks about, like, what was going on with all that. I've never okay. actually taken the time to watch them because I didn't care enough. But there's been several people that, yes, have gone down the rabbit hole of what the hell was going on with all of that. Yeah, <laughs> but I just picture the the... You know, none of that was built with a long-term craftsmanship approach. Like, it all probably, within the next six months, was all like, oh, great, my 12-inch flat screen is, (laughs) like, fell down. and a fish tank in my car? (laughs) Kind of sucks, man. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Like, it stinks. It's dirty. uh, It's splashed everywhere. I couldn't take care of my car. I've got to take care of fish. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Uh, the, All those shows were popular. Like yes, that, they were. Too, yeah. I, if I had to think, though, I just this came to mind. If I had to think of a dumb, really, if you said you had to say you had a New Year's resolution, it would be yeah. to watch more movies. That's oh, yeah. that's yeah. Uh, just a dumb goal that I kind of got started on a couple of weeks ago, but I could see, I could see myself actually sticking that one through. So I'm gonna yeah. see if I can watch a few more movies this year. 
I would definitely like to read more, but that's not. A, I'm not going to make that a thing because it's not even realistic. Yeah. I know this. I have this that next one. year is we not going to be my this. year to uh, read more. <laughs> yeah, like yeah. I just. Now, you know what? Now that I have a less than one year old, now I'm going <laughs> to yes, read a lot. Yeah. Yes. So like that's not going to happen. So I'm not even. I, I don't want. I also don't want to lie to myself and tell myself I'm going to do things that. Uh, yeah. I'm not going. I if I I'm I would like to in 2024 to read like get like three books read. That'd be commendable. I'd be pretty happy about that. You know. Yeah. Don't need to do five hundred. I want to do like three, mm-hmm. and I would feel I'd be like, all right, I got a few. Got that's through one a few every here. few months. That's making progress. Yeah. That's reading some yeah. pages. That's it. Should we wrap this biatch up? I think we better bring her on home. And the twins <laughs> and twins. <laughs> Tommy, where do they find you at? You can find me at Tomahawk underscore D. You can follow me at Tanner underscore Bear. Make sure to follow Massonomics at Massonomics. See ya.